We're going to call this meeting to order. Good evening. I'm Council Vice President Monica Galloway. Due to the illness of Council President Herbert Winfrey, I will pres preside over this special meeting. In that regard, I would ask that Councilman Davis would lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Councilman Davis. At this time, Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Roll call, please. Mr. Mays? Did you say present? Mr. Davis? Present. Mr. Guerra? Present. Ms. Fields? Present. Ms. Winfrey Carter? Present. Ms. Galloway? Present. Ms. Worthing? I'm sorry, Mr. Griggs? Present. Ms. Worthing? Present. Thank you. In accordance with Section 7-101 of the Flint City Charter, the Mayor shall submit to the City Council a final proposed annual budget for the next fiscal year, which shall begin on July 1st. Therefore, today, the Mayor is here to present the Council with the proposed annual budget for fiscal year 2019-20 and 2020-2021. I am pleased at this time to present the Honorable Mayor, Dr. Karen Weaver. Mayor Weaver. Thank you. And good evening to, to the uh, Vice President of the Council, to our City Clerk, and to all of the Council members. I'm very happy to be here to present the budget. Uh, before I get started, though, I do want to take just a moment uh, to acknowledge Huey Newsom, the City CFO, and I really want to take, take time to thank you, Huey for the work that you've done for the city of Flint. Uh, it's been 17 months and you've been more than a CFO to this city. You've become our friend. And I want you to know how much we appreciate, how much we really, really appreciate everything you've done to keep this city financially, fis you know, keep us fiscal and to keep us in the black and to make sure we're doing what we're supposed to do. And I wanna say wherever you go, they're fortunate to get you, and I'm very saddened about the reason that you're leaving, and I want you to know that we have appreciated working with you. We have appreciated what you have brought to this table. We have appreciated the professionalism and the integrity with which you have represented this city, and um, the community feels the same way. I know you will be gone after next Friday, and so I just felt like I needed to have an opportunity to say that to you publicly. I also want to say that this is the first budget proposal to you since the city came out of receivership last April. Because if you recall, it was the beginning of April that we, uh, the, this was proposed, and then two weeks later, we came out of receivership. The R tab was completely removed. So this is the first budget proposal since we came out of receivership. And one of the things I'm really proud of is that every year since being elected, I've proposed a budget that returns money to the general fund, and this year is no different. This year is no different. Despite the fact that last year we did project a 1.5 million loss in the general fund for FY20, we will be presenting a budget that is in the black. And that was, we wanted to make sure we did that. My direction to the finance department and all the department heads was that we had to be fiscally responsible. So while uh, the general fund is in the black, we know that our enterprise fund remains under stress and non-revenue water continues to be a problem. That's still an issue and a challenge that we're facing. But uh, we are hoping that City Council will support us as we get our water meter project and the other wind projects up and running to ensure operational and financial stability. One thing I want you to know with this budget is that our commitment to public safety remains intact as we increase the number of police officers and firefighters in this budget. We are proposing to keep the water and the sewer rates as they are, but there are sacrifices that we're all going to have to make due to fewer parcels in the city. 
uh, that, that's a challenge for us. So we are proposing to raise the special assessment for garbage and street lights. And I think that's something that uh, Mr. Newsom will be talking about. And I, I believe Ayanna will also be talking, you know, they'll go into more detail about that. So while we've had difficulties in the past, which we, we know we have, our situation requires that we work together. We're gonna have to work together to, to solve these things. And we know that problems come with receivership and we do not wanna go back there again. So I, I hope we can work together to make sure we keep our finances in order. So having said that, I want to um, turn this over to Mr. Uh, Huey Newsom and he's going to do a, is it a slide presentation to go through the budget with you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good, even, good evening, members of, of the City Council. <clears throat> First of all, I do want to um, apologize. We have a little printing issue, so we haven't gotten the budget to you yet. I know we have a long night ahead of us, so I did not want to hold up while we were waiting for the budgets to be final, the printing to be finalized. So what I wanted to do, I asked the mayor to go ahead and allow us to get started while we continue that um, in the interest of time. So I, but again, I do humbly apologize that we have, that the budgets aren't printed for you yet, but they will be during the course of this conversation. So what I will do um, with, with the new finance director who you all have, new, excuse me, new deputy finance director who you all have met already, I'll go ahead and go through where we are with the budget and what we are uh, gonna be proposing and walking through over the course of the next few months. So start off with the priorities. I know that we have not had an update to the, to the priorities or the strategic plan um, really since I've been here. But regardless, we have continued to march down the um, direction that was, that was last provided by council in terms of financial solvency, um, adherence to public safety, and the importance of that, and making sure that we are committed to not only keeping the city, in the <clears throat> keeping the city financially solvent, but also making sure that we, we um, are serving the residents properly, right? So we have all those requirements, not just making the numbers work, and we remain mindful of that. And also as a reminder, <clears throat> I wanted to just everybody to understand what we will be talking about tonight. And so you have the primary, uh, the millage, what I call the millage funds. So the general fund, the one-on-one fund, the public improvement fund, <clears throat> the, parks, the parks fund, the public safety fund, and the neighborhood policing fund, which are all funded by millages, which have already been established. We're not proposing to change those millages, but we, those are supported by millages. And then on top of that, you've got funds that are supported by other revenue sources, such as our major streets and local streets funds, the 202 and the 203 funds, which are primarily supported by state um, money or shared money um, that's, that's managed by the state of Michigan. You have the street lights and garbage collection fund of the 226 fund, the rubbish collection fund. Those funds are um, funded by a special assessment that is placed on the tax bills that the residents receive. The, a smaller fund, the drug, drug forfeiture fund, which is funded with, forf, with revenues from forfeitures that, are, um, that the police department manages. And on top of that, you've got the building safety fund, which is funded with fees for electrical inspections, building safety inspections, plumbing inspections, and set, et cetera. There's some smaller funds as well um, that you also adopt, and you will see those in your books as well. So what I wanted to do first, just to kind of give a lay of the land, is hand um, the microphone over to the new Deputy Finance Director, Ms. Ayana Dumpre, and she's going to give you kind of set the, set the level um, and give you context of where we are and where we're going, and then we'll do a deep dive in a second after that. Good evening, Council. Let's take a look back to some of the highlights over the past year. In April of 2018, Flint came out of receivership. In October, GM returned to city water. In December, the city closed on its drinking water revolving loan fund in the amount of $77.7 .7 million for wind funds, which will be used for capital improvements for the water delivery system. Also in December, Mayor Weaver announced that as a part of Fast Start, 18,000 lead lines had been removed. And in February of 2019, 
6.6 million in disputed funds were released from the state. Let's talk about some of the positives related to the budget. The general fund is projected to be in the black. There are some sacrifices as some unfilled positions had to be removed for the budget. However, public safety is unaffected. The assessed property values have shown some improvement and there is a net of 2.2% increase for the total taxable value. The fund balances remain generally healthy general fund balance increased to 20.3 million as of the end of fiscal year 18. But we'll also have to discuss some of the negatives that are related in the budget. Legacy costs continue to grow. You'll see that in fiscal year 20, we will have to make payments of 24.7 million for pension and 18 million for retiree health care alone. I also want you to note that by fiscal year 25, our pension payments will balloon to $39.2 million, and our retiree health care costs will continue to grow over the years as well. There is limited growth in the revenue due to economics. However, we felt that it was a good conservative projection that we put in the budget, and we are optimistic that we're moving in the right direction as we're going forward. As far as the budgets for the water and sewer funds, they are not great. But we do, we are exhausting every option available to rectify this problem. And you will see as we go further on into the details how we propose to do that. If you go over to our employee um, by department slide, as you all know, you uh, approve positions as well as dollars in the budget. And as we stated before, that there were some sacrifices made, but you can see that with police that it has increased and also remained flat for fire. There are some decreases for governance and administration, um, as well as planning development and finance and administration. Thank you. So now let's get into the, into the funds themselves. And again, you'll see the numbers as quickly as possible. And I apologize if they're not here yet. But as the mayor and Ayana did allude to, we are projecting and budgeting for um, the general fund to remain relatively flat. And you'll see that there's roughly about $180,000 um, that we are, are saying that the general fund will return to fund balance. And so with that being said, slide, slide 10. So with that being said, <clears throat> I wanted to kind of talk about what, you know, some of the things that, that are involved in that projection. First of all, again, I think it's very important to note that there's been a lot of conversation about the EAB versus the ombudsman. Again, until we receive direction and we have some sort of finale in terms of what we're supposed to do, we know we have to fund the ombudsman's position. It is in the budget, $250,000. Um, and then on top of that, I think it's very important to note that, um, you know, again, the mayor has said multiple times because it's very important that, you know, public safety is, is our, you know, one thing that we have to give to the residents unquestionably. And so, again, this budget remains, you know, spends more than 55 percent, the 55 percent required for us to spend in public safety in the general fund. This, one, this budget um, spends about $57.8 million on that. And again, all these, all these things are happening with um, a relatively flat property, property tax evalu evaluation. We saw in the um, assessed property tax value, assess, assessed tax values, we saw about a growth of about 2%. Um, and then on top of that, a slight uptick in income tax. A lot of that's based on um, you know, us getting Lear up and running, but still we have it. We, we're just now really seeing the full impact of Lear, who you know, who opened their doors fully last year. Um, and then on top of that, um, we have ongoing co contract negotiations for collective bargaining units. We have the police department um, is near, is getting closer to an agreement with the captains, lieutenants. Um, ASME 16, $1,679 of, of ASME are not complete yet. We're really just starting those. And so those are some of the things we'll have to monitor as we, um, as we uh, you know, discuss, adopt, and then 
uh, monitor this budget once we enact it going into fiscal 20. Going into fiscal 20. Okay. So again, these are more specific numbers on slide 11. You'll see that we have revenues of about 55.7 million dollars um, against um, expenditures of about 55.5. As, as Ayana did mention to you all earlier, um, one of the things we had to manage, of course, all the funds are receiving the impact of an increased pension obliga obligation, every single one, as you can imagine. So that 24.7 million, which was 22 and change a year ago, um, all of that is spread amongst the, um, amongst the different funds. So the general fund is notwithstanding. And so the general fund's um, specific share of the growth was, a, was right at four five hundred thousand 500,000 between those two numbers. And so we had to do some things like freeze hirings for vacated positions. I think you all already know that there are, um, you know, th that they, we have had trouble filling positions. And so now the, some department heads are being asked to, um, you've, been, you've been living with it, let's continue to live with it. And let's not put that in the budget if, if, um, if, we, can, if we can manage that. And so, as we move into the other funds, I think we spend a lot of time talking about the general fund. It's, you know, it, it obviously is the one that kept, captures the most attention, but obviously we have a budget that looks at um, the other um, adopted funds as well, and I wanted to talk, we want to talk about those tonight as well. So as, on the preceding pages, you will see tables where fiscal's, fisc, our fiscal 20 recommendation is circled. Of course, this is a biennial budget, and so you'll see fiscal 21 numbers as well. But if you look here, you will see, and the key, the key um, line is gonna be net revenue and appropriations. So basically, if we're returning money to the fund, then that number's not negative, no parentheses. And if we're, um, if we're losing money in the fund, then you have parentheses around it. Unfortunately for um, 202 and 203, our major streets and local streets um, funds, those funds are, um, are not returning money, but this is, not as much of a concern. We'll talk about this when we have the hearings. But for the Act 51 funded funds, it's, we're really on a use it or lose it basis. And so what we have to do is show that we're doing projects. And as we do projects, we can ask for that reimbursement on the back end. And you'll see that, you know, and if you look at the 202 fund, we've accumulated an $11 million fund balance. And so looking at that, looking at that larger fund balance, we've been accumulating money and not spending it. And so now it's time for us to spend it, and so that's the reason you see that that um, negative that negative um, um, that negative that negative figure. The 203 fund kind of follows the same trend; it's a smaller fund, so 4.2 million dollars, um, 4.2 million dollars of fund balance. And again, that's a large accumulation for a fund that where appropriations, you know, about is is equal to your annual appropriations. All right. So the mayor did talk about the street lighting and the rubbish collection fund funds. And right now, this is based on what we're going to recommend as the, um, these revenue projections, which cause these funds to remain in the black or remain positive, are based on the higher assessment, assessment values. And so again, you'll see that we really don't have a lot of room to work with in 226's fund balance or 219's fund balance. You see that the ending fund balance as of the end of fiscal 18 was 1.07, 1.1 million dollars, and the ending fund balance for 226 was 1.6 million. And so, again, we don't have a lot to work with there. And so now, what we're saying is we really need to look at these 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 um, assessment values and visit whether or not um, we can continue. We don't want these funds obviously going to go in the red. We have to remain um, we have to remain um, fiscally fiscally responsible. And so here, in your presentation, you see the parcel counts that have led us to um, the unavoidable conclusion that we now have to, um, you know, we, we have a dwindling number of parcels that we can, that we can charge this assessment to. I think we all know with, about the challenge with land bank owned properties, those properties we don't build that assessment to. Um, and so really, you see this in garbage, you see it on street lighting, both have a unique challenge. On, this, on the garbage side, you, can, um, you can't charge vacant parcels, right? 
So as you see abandoned or vacant parcels, they can't be charged a special assessment. You can do that on the street lighting side, but um, you can do that on the street lighting side, but on the street lighting side, you have the issue of people able to combine parcels. If I have a multi-unit, um, if I have a multi-unit building, then I can only charge that building once versus twice for garbage. And so you see the numbers here. Normally, you know, I try, we try to keep the presentations high level, but because this is something that we really all need to understand um, all together based on what we're, based on, you know, the, the prospect of increasing this assessment rate, I wanted to make sure that you all had this information in front of you. We can provide additional backup information if needed, but what we're doing is we're saying that we would increase, we're proposing that we need to increase the, um, the rubbish collection, the garbage special assessment to 167.47, and then the street lighting one to 109.71. So let me continue on. Um, let me explain a little bit about the 402 and the 301 funds. 402 fund, as you know, is a public improvement fund and it is funded by a millage. And that one does pay a transfer into the 301, which is our debt service fund. And so unfortunately over the past few years, we have been very limited in, what, in, in current projects that we can fund out of the public improvement um, out of the public improvement fund because of the debt service requ requirements this year unfortunately is not not very different um, because right now that um, the money that is going out of the 301 fund which as you see is a two point the 2.1 million it's a little larger than what than the revenue that the 402 fund is bringing in so right now every project that we're funding that's current is um, every project we're funding right now that's current is funded really out of fund balance, the 402. The good news is there's a healthy fund balance in the 402 fund, but at some point, we're going to have to do something. Uh, tonight, I believe, you will be presented with a uh, refunding, a loan refunding resolution. One of the things we want to do is um, look, at the, look at the loans that are serviced out of the 301 fund and potentially get lower rates to cut costs. So we feel that this is a great first step to start to relieve some pressure on the 402 fund um, to, you know, by reducing rates that the 301 has to pay, reducing the transfer that goes from 402 to 301, and they're hopefully relieving that pressure so that the 402 fund can actually fund current improvements versus paying for the paying for the um, loans that funded past improvements. Now moving on, I think the 542 fund um, is relatively flat. I'm, I'm not as concerned about the 542 fund. The one thing that we do want to make sure that when we do these projections, we're basing it on a certain amount of volume, um, uh, inspection volume, building safety, building safety inspection volume, um, plumbing inspection, electrical, electrical inspection, that sort of thing. So though there are certain assumptions that go in here, and if that volume is reduced, then obviously those, you know, you didn't adjust the fees, you don't, you're not collecting as much revenue in, in that fund. I'm not as concerned about the 542, but as we said before, as we said before, the um, water and sewer funds continue to remain an issue. The two numbers I do want you all to ponder uh, or make sure, make sure that I point out um, for 590 and 591. Um, the sewer fund ending fund balance, I don't know if you all had a chance to read your CAFRs and um, actually let me take a step back. Let me take a step back and say one thing really quickly. Um, you know, one thing I wanna make sure we do is have a q and I'm gonna to propose to the finance chair that we have a kind of a QA. and a This is more of a ceremonial type of, here is the, um, here is the budget. But what I wanna do is have a QA and a so you all can ask me questions um, directly about the budget before we get into the hearings. And we'll talk about this hopefully more in finance committee. But um, one thing I do wanna make sure is very clear to you all is why this, why the sewer fund balance is a 16-4 versus the 37 it was when we ended, um, before, we ended um, before we ended fiscal 18. And so if you go back to the audit report that was provided um, by Yo and Yo and the finance department um, back in January, it talks about how the um, sewer fund fund balance was negatively impacted because of a new, um, 
a new GASB requirement called GASB 75. GASB 75 basically says that you, you all can't just recognize the liability of what's called the ARC payment, which is your annual retire, which is your annual required contribution to your OPEB, right? So basically what I'm saying is every year we pay so much money to our retirees in the form of health care, right? And so what had been happening was every year we recognize that annual, that annual contribution and that's what hits our books as a liability. What GASB 75 says <clears throat> is that, wait, you're not gonna just recognize your annual contribution, you have to recognize the whole liability. And that hits the enterprise fund, that hit the enterprise funds to a point that the fund balance was restated. So I wanna make sure you all have a chance to ask questions and understand this very clearly because it kind of, it, nobody asked those questions while we were talking about it during the audit, by, during the uh, financial presentation by Yo and Yo back in January. So before we, you know, before, you know, before I leave, I wanna make sure that this is very clear to you all so you understand exactly what happened here with sewer funds fund balance. So I also wanted to point out the $77.4 million of revenue that's on the books um, for the water fund. And I wanna, I want you, you ought to be very clear that 21 million of that was for um, the forgiveness of the water loan, the dwarf loan back in November 2017. So you remember November 2017, there was, there was a lot of um, fanfare about the fact that the state of Michigan decided to forgive one of our dwarf loans. This isn't the $77.5 million loan that we just, that we just closed on in, um, in December of 18, this is one previous to that. So there was a $20.7 million loan forgiveness. We had to count that as revenue. So this is not indicative of the fact that we had a lot of collections come into the water system. We are still in um, dire shape. And again, I will point you to your CAFRs um, if you need any more information on splitting out operational um, revenue, which is the big issue versus a special one-time revenue that came from the forgiveness of a debt. So I wanted to make sure you all are very clear on that. Um, the negative numbers that we're showing here for the enterprise funds, um, the 1.7 million and of course the water uh, at, four point, at really 5 million, that's serious. And so as the mayor point talk, talked about and Ayana pointed out, you know, we are feverishly trying to get those, those projects going. And you'll see some in front of you this evening. We're feverishly trying to get those projects going so that when we, um, you know, when we, once we get them implemented, particularly the water meter project, we can address our non-revenue problem, right? That's a serious problem. And again, we appreciate the cooperation that you all have given us so far, and we anticipate that there will be continued cooperation because this is something that will continue to dog us financially. So we are not recommending any water rate increases, despite the fact that you see the, um, you know, the negative numbers that you saw on the previous slide. We're not recommending any, um, any increases. But what we are saying again is that we have to be very, very focused on this. And again, the administration will bring you updates and of course will bring you ideas and resolutions as we have before on how do we get and continue to remain on top of this. I think that fiscal, tw fiscal, you know, fiscal year 20 is gonna be very critical because that's our one opportunity to fix this non-revenue problem. And again, in last year's presentation, I did, we did show a slide that kind of shows what that problem is. If you can only account for, if you can't account for 40% of what goes through your water system, then you can't bill for it. If you can't bill for it, you can't bill for it, then you definitely can't you know, collect on it. And if you can't collect on it, but you're already paying for it, that's a problem. And so even though usage has dwindled down both on what's gone out of the system versus what's come into the system, we still have that gap, and we have to figure out what to, we have to figure out what we're going to do about it. And so, very quickly, just as a reminder to close the loop for everyone, there are other there are other funds that you all don't adopt. The fringe benefit fund, which is a 627 fund, 
IT, which is 636, Fleet, which is 661, and the self-insurance fund, which is 677. Those you all don't adopt. We will be, we will be sharing during the hearings, particularly, you know, like for instance, when IT comes up um, during the hearings, we will be sharing those departmental budgets like we did last year. Um, but they aren't part of your adopted package. Now, also, of course, on top of that, the 274 and the 296 funds, which are special net revenue grant funds, also aren't included as well because those are, um, we amend the budget as we get grants. So that's the reason those aren't included. And finally, in your books, when you finally receive them, um, you will see that the two, there's a 208 fund, which is parks, 265, 583, and 246 funds um, will be included, but th since those are smaller, I didn't have, we didn't have a slide up for those particular ones, but you will see those because they still have to be adopted. So, um, again, you know, this is, we, this is more, this isn't a really a Q&A session. We'll have a Q&A session, hopefully, if we can work that out, and finance chair and I continue to try and fit, you know, finalize the hearing schedule, at least for next week. So, um, you know, once you get the books, please review them against the presentation. I actually want you all to ask questions because, again, this is my, you know, this next week is my last week here. And, you know, I do have to acknowledge what the mayor said. I am grateful, you know, I'm very grateful that you see the, the hard work and heart and effort that I put into the city. I feel like I left, I'm leaving a part of me. Um, and I appreciate that you appreciate it because it is from here. And I say that to you all as well. Um, we have not always had great times, but like I said in my, in my letter, I do appreciate the fact that when I stood before you in November, I was approved unanimously, unanimously. And, you know, I hope that, you know, this is my second budget cycle, and I'm going to pat myself on the back. I got two done. I did propose two. Uh, my, predecessors only, my predecessors only got through one. But um, I do want to, um, you know, even though we haven't always had, um, it hasn't always been um, kind and friendly, and we've had some bumps in the road. I do want you all to understand that I did really leave, my, leave a piece of my heart here. And what I did wasn't just for the money or just for, you know, for, you know, for me. It was really for the residents of the city of Flint, and I do consider myself a lifelong <coughs> Flintstone. And I appreciate everything that you all have done to help me be successful, CFO. So with that being said, um, what I'm going to humbly ask first is that the finance chair, I don't think we want to get into a back and forth um, here, but I would ask for a discussion item, maybe we can do that in finance committee, a quick discussion item so we could talk about, you know, what, what if we can meet next week and do hearings. I know we've had some conversation about, you and I have had conversation, you've had correspondence with, with the, um, with the members of council. I'd like to see if we can get that locked down because I would like for us to get a few hearings out of the way next week, if at all possible. And so with that, I turn it over to Madam Chair. Thank you. Mr. Um, Madam Chair. At this time, thank you, Mayor Weaver. Thank you, uh, Mr. Newsom. At this time, I would entertain a motion Madam from Chair. a member of the Flint City Council to receive the proposed budget. Councilman Mays. Yeah, Madam Chair, I move that uh, Mr. 190107 presentation fiscal year fiscal years 2019 2020 and 2020 and 2021 biannual proposed city of flint budgets i move that um we receive them at this time Thank Ma you. There's a motion. Madam Chair. Mr. Davis. I second. It's been moved and seconded. Can we do a discussion on that? No discussion. We can do a roll call unless there's further discussion. We don't have any discussion. No. Okay. So we don't have. Point of order. What's your point of order, Councilman? It can be discussion. Ms. Fields. I, I'm not sure what is being passed out, but unless that's the actual budget, okay, uh, I think that motion uh, needs to be amended because we've not been presented with the actual budget yet. Is that what's being handed out, Mr. Newsom? Um, Madam Chair. Councilman Mays. 
the presentation that this motion was made on was the presentation we just received. Right. Um, in that, I'm glad to see the budget, but if it hadn't been passed out, I was going to still push for the presentation of the budget to be received. Um, I would like to say that, you know, as we go through the budget here in processes and we look not only at the fiscal year 2020 and 21, but beyond, I'm eager to get into that process and have discussions. Um, I also wanted to say at this time that I've been in this city a long time. And me and, and, and I, too, Mayor Weaver, and to your administration, can appreciate the work and the timing in which, at which Mr. Newsom came in. Um, unlike Mr. Newsom's letter, I don't think I'm going to resign for whatever reason. And so my position is this. That's a serious department, Mayor Weaver and Mr. Newsom. And I'm looking at Don Steele as well as Mr. Newsom. Um, and I don't say never until we get to the 29th leaving. And I'm looking at, um, what's her name, Mr. Newsom? Ms. Dumpre. Ms. Dumpre. Dumpre, yes. Um, sitting in that seat. And I've seen in this city many um, consultant agreements. I've seen many contracts. And I wouldn't care if Ms. Steele and Mr. Newsom was overseas or in New York or in Georgia. But I'm going to be proposing that if need be, in order to support you until we get things in place, I have no objection to some type of contract for either and or both Don Steele and Mr. Newsom, whether they're here every day or not, until we um, get that department on track and we'll be talking more about it. I'll be supporting this motion to accept or receive the presentation as it relates to the budget. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, Madam Clerk, roll call, please. Mr. Mays? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Mr. Guerra? Yes. Ms. Fields? Yes. Ms. Winfrey Carter? Yes. Ms. Galloway? Yes. Mr. Briggs? Yes. Ms. Worthing? The vote is eight yes, zero no to receive the budget. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, at this time, I you will mean Madam Clark. ask. Um, Madam Clark, sorry. <laughs> at this time, I will um, ask for comments from each council member. Uh, point of minutes. order. What's your point of order? It says other business on the agenda. Correct. Yeah. And so, if I may. Well, that's, we're, that's going to be next. Yeah. That's where we're at. Councilman That's Mays. what's now. It says other business. I don't see what you're saying. Well, Councilman Mays, if you notice that there's also not on this final comments. So final comments are now. Yeah, I don't see final comments. I know in a, any meeting the public can address the council, but based upon the agenda. But either way you do it, may I speak? Sure, Mr. Mays. OK. And the reason I wanted the floor, um, Madam Chair, it's because from the letter I read, I didn't read it the day it was issued by Mr. Newsom. I read it later where I could digest it. And, you know, I'm a certain type of person. They said at one point I was going the wrong way on the highway with four flats, and when I come back, if I don't, I'll do it now. You know, you apologize. You keep moving. You, you don't know what happened. You pray to God. You say grace and mercy. You testify in church. We for real, some of us, I am. I don't care what people think and see. If what Mr. Newsom said in that letter is true, and if the accusations the false information, the allegations, the request to meet with the governor and lieutenant um, 
I mean the Attorney General, if that letter and the communications in this council had something to do with it, Mr. Newsom, I apologize. And I'm here to tell you that everybody involved should apologize, and this is the time to do it. And so that's why I wanted the final comments or other city business, Madam Chair, I don't expect to hear it. You hear my voice echoing through this first ward seat. Folks still might believe the allegations is true, but they ain't. I looked at the last letter, Ms. Fields, and that last letter talked about using money to pay AECOM from the water and sewer fund. Anything water related, you can use water funds. And AECOM was managing water business. And so that ain't gonna hold up. I've dissected all of those allegations. By me being of good attendance, I knew and thought the six million would be reimbursed. I'm investigating, had a hearing. I don't know what happened to the hearing yet. I'm subpoenaing folks, getting questions answered, and folks was boycotting the hearing, in my opinion, because they show sure wasn't here. So without belaboring the point, because I got months, weeks, and years ahead of me, but it's relevant in this meeting, in front of this administration, in front of that CFO and the public, that I shouldn't be the only voice up here saying, Mr. Newsom, now I use an old word in the street. You different from me, and I don't know what your business is. I'm still trying to keep in contact with you and Don still in a professional manner, but you ain't gonna see me resign. I ain't studying them. Let's see if they studying what I'm talking about. Thank you, Madam Chair. Apologies and communications is in order. Thank you, Mr. Mays. Um, what's your request for information? I'm uh, just trying to understand, are we to ask some questions about the presentation no. now or not? Nope. Just general comment. Yep, this is simply to receive it. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, any final comment and or, I guess, other business? Mr. Davis. Thank you, Madam Chair. And I have the same sentiments as Mr. Mays about Mr. Newsom. Your service is, is highly, it, it's up there. It's very high. Your professionalism is the best. It's, it's a major loss to see a person of your caliber that came in and helped us out of the situation. I can't say out to recovery, to see you walk away. Not by choice, but by ignorance. This body got, from the day one I kept saying, it don't work like this. Disrespect, blatant on all sides. It's nine people up here, including me. Blatant disrespect. No matter who the administration bring is not good enough. She could go get Barack Obama, put him up here, ain't gonna be good enough. So what am I saying? I'm very frustrated. Only one I could change, Mr. Newsom, as well as administration, is myself. It take a big person to apologize. Anybody can mouth off and get mad, but the biggest person is the one who know I admit I was wrong. This body would never come up to the caliber of, I don't think, of apology. But I can speak for me and me only. I really hate to see what the administration as well as you went through, because not only you going through, but the man, the whole administration. It's way out of order. But I'm hoping this day with the chief sitting here, it did something to me to see that, that, that statement babysitting, because that's accurate as you could get right there. This body act like a bunch of elected kids, prejudiced kids. And you could be black and be prejudiced, by the way. I'm not talking color. But I will say this. I hope, from what, I hope we learn from what happened through you. We got to do better. We got, it's mandated, we do better. I hope this budget pass is clear that the administration trying to move the city forward. The administration is not an enemy. Whatever imp behind the scenes keep articulating that they got to be the check and balance of administration that's against the city. We ain't going to make it. This crisis is not over. Mr. Newsom, I thank you for your service, but I'm not the one that bite my tongue. I was called a yes man. I'm not that. I owe nobody nothing but the love. 
we can't continue to lose quality people as administration and the mayor brought in. It, it's really disheartening for the city, and especially for me. Thank you for your service, and I'm done. I yield the floor. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mr. Guerra. Yeah, Mr. Newsom, <clears throat> before you leave, I want to thank you for your service to the city of Flint. I think that you've done a fine job, and I hope wherever you go, you continue doing a great job for your community. And at this time, you know, looking how tight the budget's going to be, um, and keeping in mind what recently has happened with the local officers' compensation board, um, I would like to make a motion that we deny the uh, wage increases in the benefits from the local officers' compensation commission. There's a motion on the floor. Is there a second, Ms. Madam Chair? Ward? I second that. It's been moved and seconded. Madam Is there any Chair. discussion, Councilman Mays? Yeah, Madam Chair. I look at the recommendations from the local officers compensation board as two separate things. So I'm gonna make a substitute motion and my substitute motion is gonna be that, well, I, I, maybe I won't, let me slow down. I'll do it this way. I'll be voting no to deny that because I support the wage increase for the mayor. It went from 91 to 125, I think. At the most, 95 to 125, but I think it was at 91. I think from talking to Ms. Brown, our keeper of the records and the honorable clerk, that you could see where Woodrow Stanley was at 105,000, I think. But we were in emergency manager law for years. I think dating back to 2011. This is 2019. Can you imagine if I was still working for General Motors and the cost of living and things went up and I didn't get a raise, I'd be on strike. It's nothing wrong with an increase after 10, 15, 20 years. I wouldn't care if the mayor's salary was up at 154 or 170,000, because I'm not voting for a salary for Mayor Weaver. I'm voting for the office of mayor of the city of Flint, the office, not the person. I'm not advocating for Councilman Mays to be at 48 or 54,000 with attendance requirements to come to meetings and be in my office. I don't have none now. I can come if I want to, don't show up if I want to, don't recall, uh, return calls if I want to, and I'm getting paid. Ain't no requirements. My position is if you got a council who have other jobs, some of them worked in General Motors in the past, some of them school teachers, some of them professors at college, some of them teach and do different things and we neglect city business. We don't meet but three, four times a month, and business is piled up, agenda items is passed, and then we get elected. When we get elected, you don't know if I'm smart or dumb, but if I had a staff person, like in Detroit, Chicago, Los Angeles, my staff person might be smart and could advise me. So I've for 30 years been an advocate of full-time counsel with a staff person for 30 years. This ain't nothing new. Check the record. I stood and said this on the microphone during public comment before I was a councilman. I'll be voting no to reject that. And Mr. Guerra, I wish you would have split them up. Now why would you vote no on the mayor's salary unless you propose in a higher one? I'll vote no on the council salary because we was at 21,000 before the emergency manager. And I'll say to that local officer's compensation board, it's an insult to hand me $1,000. Keep it. Keep it. And I don't need um, retirement if I win a four-year term and then lose in the fifth year. Give me the money now. So I don't think they know and look at it what I know. And so my position is this, I almost made a substitute motion to accept the mayors and reject ours. So Mr. Gary, I don't know where this is coming from. In order to, for this motion to pass, it's gonna take 
five or six votes. I hope they ain't here today. You don't get the mayor and folks up here. We could have wait for that. But now it's here and we're talking about it. I'll be voting no, and then I'll make substitute motions. I don't even think we didn't had time to deliberate this, Mr. Guerra. Now, you can come back and table it, but it ain't, ain't no need to vote no at this time. I urge my <clears throat> colleagues not to pass this thing. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Reyes. Uh, Ms. Fields? Um, I did want a little clarification on this motion if uh, Mr. Uh, Guerra included um, all of the recommendations for both mayor and council in that motion. Was all wage. Can I clarify? The motion was for all wage increases and benefits been made by the local officers compensation commission. Okay, thank you. Um, I'd like to say that in terms of these uh, raises, um, since I've been on council with the exception of the general police department and uh, through collective bargaining, the fire department and the sergeant's uh, police department, um, nobody in this city, or let's say no regular employees, okay, have gotten raises. Um, I believe appointees have, and I think I've asked for a referral I haven't gotten yet about which raises have been given. But I think point of information. What's your point of information? Didn't we approve some collective bargaining agreements from employ for employees that had some gains? Can't that your 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 yep. motion I is, is denied. Thank you, Ms. Fields. I stated which ones collective bargaining when I was speaking, Mr. Mays, which ones we had given raises to. But I feel that the staff at the city, we know everybody is short staff. We know people are doing multiple jobs. I believe people are working outside of their uh, classifications because there just aren't enough people to do the jobs, to do the work. And while a couple thousand per council people, a per each council person isn't a lot of money, a 40% raise for the mayor is quite a bit of money. And I just don't feel that we should be giving elected officials raises while we're not able to give the um, general bureaucrat that's down here doing the work day in, day out, when we can't afford to give them raises. So um, I'll be supporting against the raises. Madam Chair. Thank you. Um, Mr. Fields, I mean, Mr. Davis. Madam Chair. Thank you. Ms. Worthy, I have you. Thank, Thank you, you, Madam Chair. Thank you, sir. I'm gonna say this. And I mean what I say. Take it out of love if you choose. Ain't no way in the world I would support denying an increase. We don't have quality people up here as it is. You get what you pay for. I learned that a long time ago. I buy the best. We need council people. We need a pay raise. Let me back that up, restate that. The mayor came in in a situation that was dire to everyone here, there's a lot of people that died. You get what you pay for. I remember a year ago when we came here, it was conversation about the mayor not having security, the mayor not having finances for books and just petty stuff. You're denying it. That, our mayor need an increase. Way more, I'm like Councilman Mays. Yes, uh, redo that uh, proposal and, and increase the mayor's income. Now when it comes to council, I got my own money. I got my own insurance, check the record. It's not for me. It's the quality of the people up here. That's why the mayor and administration have such a hard time. We could pay, afford to get better quality people up here if that pay was quality enough so somebody could avoid working two jobs. People get up and walk out. People don't stay to the end of a meeting. And I can say it because I haven't missed zero vote. I never missed, I don't think I've been, I haven't been late no day or been absent no day because I take it serious. You raise that pay up to where serious people, whoever it is on orders want to govern the city the right way without a prejudice, they would now can afford to not have an extra job and sit up here and do this job right. Preconceived ideas where you're not manipulated. You need quality people up here. You get what you pay for. We got people that's working jobs, and if I'm broke, I'm just barely getting by. I got to make some rise decisions, a lot of high-profile stuff we have to decide on. 
We need quality people. Pay them. That ain't this paid below poverty? It is. All right then. So who you think gonna work a real, give up a real job and come for a poverty pay other than for pride or a hidden agenda? We don't need that no more. Raise, thank you for the compensation board for that increase. But how dare you to try to deny the mayor an increase? And I'm done and I yield the floor. Thank you, sir. Um, Ms. Worthing. I too have talked to many um, employees and uh, people in my ward, and no one is in favor of this raise. Uh, council did get restored to what it was before the emergency manager. However, a $34,000 raise for the mayor, that's more than what most in the city of Flint make in one year. Um, that's 36%, that's quite a bit. Uh, I, I cannot in good conscience uh, past that, uh, also given the fact that employees in the city have not gotten raises and are not making what they need to be. Thank you. Um, any further discussion? Yeah, Madam okay. Chair. Councilman Mays, you have 18 seconds. <laughs> 18 I'm just saying, seconds. Come Mays, on, Ms. Galloway. Okay. However many seconds I got, I'm going to use them. Thank but you. listen to this. Ms. Fields and Ms. Worthen, we the ones who can raise employees' salaries, not the local officers' compensation board. You mixing apples and oranges. You didn't give employees raises last year. That's your fault. You can do it this year. This is for officers, elected officials. You're missing the point. That's your charge. Mr. Guerra, I move to table this until we have a discussion in committee meeting. Madam Chair. Mad um, Mr. Davis. I second. It's been moved and seconded to table. Um, is there discussion on the table of the motion? Ms. Fields. Sorry. I believe there's a certain time limit on um, accepting or rejecting this or rejecting it. We don't technically have to accept it. Uh, and if we table it, unfortunately, I believe it goes past the date. I think it'll automatically go into effect uh, tomorrow if we don't um, vote on this tonight. So I won't be voting to table. Madam Chair. Councilman Mays. <laughs> oh, Councilman Mays. Was he trying to slip one in on y'all? Because if you table it and don't vote tonight, it go into effect tomorrow. No, that ain't what Councilman Mays was trying to do. Councilman Mays know that the local officers' compensation board met again, and they made another filing. Ms. Fields don't know if it goes into effect tomorrow or 30 days from when they've met the second time. She don't know that. So through you, Madam Chair, to the city attorney, we don't know if any of us know that. But what we do know is that we vet this stuff in committee and we don't just vote off the flow. Mr. Gary, you've done something that's whatever and whoever you talk to, if you come in up with your, in your own mind, you done made a motion on something that ain't been properly vetted by this council. Maybe we would have vetted it last time, but the last meeting was adjourned for lack of a quorum. Were you there? That's why I get so mad about council people leaving meetings, ain't here, falling asleep at meetings, and can't get the business done. And then they run in here and make motions and say what they will and won't vote on and ain't vetted it. Maybe they had a round robin and talked illegally outside of a meeting or sent letters or emails to each other, but it didn't happen in an open meeting. So what you mean you won't table? You can table, Ms. Fields. You can discuss it in committee. You can recess this meeting and come back at 7 or 8 o'clock and be in the same meeting. It's seven or eight ways to do business if you understand procedure. Now, Ms. Galloway, you might be the swing vote here. 
And Ms. Galloway, I hope you do vote the table, and Mr. Gary, you too, because you can recess this special meeting, go discuss it in committee, and unrecess this meeting at 8 or 9 o'clock tonight, and tomorrow ain't a deadline, Ms. Fields. So every time Ms. Fields say the sky is a shade of blue, I'm going to say it's a good-looking blue with clouds. So if you hear what I said, Ms. Fields, don't run that on this council about we running a deadline because we still got the opportunity to, to recess, discuss properly, get the right details from Ms. Wheeler, Ms. Brown, and others, and then come back out of recess after committee meeting. Hello. Thank you. And I did ask Ms. Wheeler some, and if she don't know, that's going to give you more reason to recess. And, you know, don't, Ms. Fields, you know I'm a mechanical man. Counsel, don't listen to that. Is there any further discussion? Do you want me to oh, comment? Oh, yeah. Um, Mr. I'll get you Mr. Griggs and then Ms. Worthing after we hear from our attorney. Point of order. What's your point of order? Can I hear from the attorney first? It was in my script. Did you listen to what I said? I said, I'll see you, Mr. Griggs and Ms. Ms. Worthing after oh, we hear Oh, I heard what attorney. you said. Okay. That's why I called the point. But <laughs> you know, Madam Chair, I'm eager to get my questions answered. Go ahead. Okay, thank you. Yeah, the um, Flint City Charter 1-502B, um, it's a 30-day period uh, from the time that the actual um, recommendation is filed. In this case, the Local Officers' Compensation Commission met a second time, and I believe they did a new filing, which I was conferring with um, Ms. Brown to see what that date was. I believe it may have been uh, March 19th. So, like I said, if it's an amended one, like I said, it would be my understanding that it would be the new date for the, the new 30, 30 day. Right. Thank you, ma'am. Mr. Griggs? So that ain't true about tomorrow. Um, since Councilman Mays brought up uh, meeting times, uh, my constituents in Ward 8 agree with me. We shouldn't have any meetings. Mr. Mr. Griggs, just so you know, um, the motion on the floor is to table. So well, the Mr. Mays brought up meeting times, people leaving meetings. I'm addressing that. Nine and a half hours is too long for a meeting. Mr. Gri meeting should, Mr. Griggs. meeting should only last four Mr. hours. Griggs. Point of order, Madam Mr. Chair. Order. I need to hear him out. That's relevant it's, to the discussion, the table. Not. It is in my oh mind. My goodness. Mr. Griggs, right now we are on a motion to table. Would point of look, order, Madam what Chair. What is your point of order, Council? Rule on whether what he's saying is relevant. If you say it ain't, I believe it is, I'm going to appeal you. I want to hear what it's he got. It's not relevant. Okay, I, I appeal There's the ruling of the chair. There's a motion to appeal the ruling of the chair. Is there a second? second. Mr. Davis has been moved and seconded. You guys, we are, we are discussing in a special meeting that is supposed to be about the mayor presenting her budget, we are in a meeting right now to discuss whether we are tabling or no. Anything outside of whether you're doing that and what relates to that is not relevant. And that is the reason for my ruling. Is there any further Yeah, discussion? Madam Chair. Councilman Mays. Yeah, Madam Chair, we didn't dispose of the business as to the, relates to the presentation of the budget. We didn't did that. Now we own other business. And on other business, a motion was properly made by Mr. Guerra to deal with the um, salaries. Mr. Griggs is 100% right in my mind. You can't discriminate. If I mention and talk about meetings and her motion is not to postpone because a meeting tomorrow, I couldn't hardly hear what he was saying about meetings and you was interrupting him. You're wrong. When you give a man or a woman or a council person the flow, sometimes you got to be quiet. You can't read his mind and see where he was going to go with that and how he was going to end up. I'm pretty sharp, and I couldn't because you kept walking over him. I rule you out of order. And I say, I want to hear what the man got to say. You wouldn't even let him get off first base. He ain't got to appeal you. He might not know, but I do it for myself. I do it for him. I do it for anybody. You were wrong. 
I will be voting no on your ruling. And I hope you, in the future, let us hear what these folks got to say. Just because you the chair, don't, you can't get a flow and interrupt folks after a minute and a half or 30 seconds. I was trying to figure out where we're coming from. It's important to me. I'll be voting no. You, you ruling wrong. Is there any further discussion? Ms. Fields. I'd like to say that while I understand where Mr. Griggs' question is coming from, as far as at this point in time when the motion is to table, those comments were made on the previous motion um, by Mr. Mays. So I think the chair is correct at this point in time on this particular appeal. And I would suggest that after this appeal is dealt with, after the vote to table is dealt with, if we go back to the other motion, that is the time to bring up that concern. Is there any further discussion? Yeah. Ms. Worthing. Until the chair uh, does not discriminate and then makes everyone s speak on the issue at hand, then I'm going uh, to not vote in favor of the chair. It's discriminatory to allow one person to disparage other council members, say whatever they want, and then immediately say to another council member, oh, that's off topic. It's gotta be fair. Mr. Griggs? I believe I got my point across. I don't wanna hear any more rambling on this. Madam Chair. Council Mays, you speak one time on an appeal and you have. And so to point answer. Point of order. What's your point of order, Councilman? Where are you getting that from? Councilman Mays, that's the rules. Under no, it ain't in our rules. It might be Robert's rules from Coco, but our rules say we speak twice for a, t a maximum of five minutes. Council rules Not supersede a, Robert's rules. They don't? You think they don't? I'm going to prove you wrong again. We always Wheeler. speak twice on the motion, and that's our rules. I ain't studying Coco's and and, and, and what you going off of, you learn that over at Mott on Robert's rules. Our rules, we speak twice on the motion, Ms. Galloway. You fumbling the ball on that chairmanship that you think you took from me. Yeah. I don't even have to look. Our rules, we speak twice on the motion. I don't know what you're looking for. You ain't going to find it. I can show you what we do on a motion. I ain't studying what Coco talking about. Mr. Davis, what's your point of order? Council Rule 7.1. Parliamentary inquiry. What's your? <laughs> I believe there is, we, and we had all been in agreement and had understood through our sessions, when an appeal is on the table or appeal is on the floor, there is no additional point of orders until that appeal is resolved. Oh, we, I'm looking for my appeal. I'm so sorry, you guys. Did you understand that, Ms. Galloway? Thank you. You left. You can appeal an appeal. Give me one second, you guys. I'm sorry. I want to apologize to you guys. Um, an appeal is not deemed to be a regular motion. It's its, its own separate entity. And I apologize, um, Attorney Willer, I think I'm just going to. Where are you reading that at? It's a motion. It's in Robert's rule. They, they all call motions. Some of them is privileged, some of them is main, some of them is regular. That's why we have in discussion, it's a motion. Okay. Ain't no way you can get around. A motion is a motion. Our rules allow for twice. Robert's rules allow for once. We operating by our rules. First, Robert's rules, second. You give him the seven points. Yep, 13. This is where we run into problems in meetings, Chief. People who don't know. Um, if you guys just give us, one of the things that, um, it, our, our rules do not, I th I, they do address, if I'm not mistaken, but if they don't address 
an appeal of the chair. An appeal of the chair is not like our regular motions. And so where our rules are silent on a motion, Robert's rules takes precedent. They ain't silent on a motion, no. Read what we do on a motion. They ain't silent, it's right there in bold black right. print. You just trying to make it be your way. I'm, I'm not. So um, 29.7 says, any person who is called to order shall thereupon yield the floor until the president shall have determined whether he or she is in order. Every question of order shall be decided by the pre president subject to an appeal by any council person to the council. If a person so engaged in presentation shall be determined by the council to be out of order, that person shall not be permitted to continue at the same meeting except on special leave of the council. And, I, and the attorney brought that, that's the only thing we have in our rules that mentions appeal again. No, it ain't. Point, point of okay, order, 25.1. Thank you. Just, you know, we've been doing this for months. You've been here for years. Don't change in the middle of the stream. Oh, thank you. In the union, we had past practice. Thank you just didn't think you learned something. Thank you. Um, any two persons have the right to appeal the presiding officer's decision on a point of order. Although this is not a point of order, but appeal. Um, this requires one member making or taking the appeal and another seconding or supporting it. Lack of support means the motion fails. If the motion is supported, the council body votes to decide the question. Members have no right to question the decision or ruling of the presiding officer unless they appeal from his or her decision. So it does not, again, the, thank you for that, Mr. Davis. We're going to give you some more. Don't Council thank us yet. Councilman May. So, with that being said, the, the discussion piece. I appeal the ruling of the chair. You cannot appeal twice. Yes, in you emotion. can. No, we you had can. that no, second at somebody because we went over that you with can. Coco, Miss Galloway. You they embarrassing you this council. Oh. You rejecting an appeal? You can't. And, and Coco told you. When even Kate and them left, you can appeal while an appeal. You can't tell somebody they can't appeal you for trying to shut them up. And so we do appeal you because you don't know what you're talking about. And you're going to honor it and if it's a second. And your job now is to ask, is there a second to this second appeal? That's your job. Rule 1.2. The president or chair presiding officer shall is required to, desire, to decide all questions arising under these rules and general parliamentary practice subject to appeal. While on all questions of order and interpretation of the rules and a priority of business, it is the duty of the chair to first decide the question. It is the privilege of any member to appeal from the decision. If the appeal is seconded, the chairperson states his decision and that it has been appealed from and then states the question thus. Shall the decision of the chair stand as the judgment of the council? The chairman can then, without leaving the chair, state the reason for his decision, his or her, after which it is open to debate. The appeal shall be determined by a majority of the council elect. Again. The chair. Point of order. Um, it's an appeal on the floor. Your job is to ask her, is there a second? Any council person can appeal any decision Council of bad Mays. ruling. Councilman Mays, you're out of order. No, you out of order. You it's are. an appeal. You do, then and you, your job is to ask, appeal. is it a second? You refuse to ask, is it a second? I do, because it's out okay, of order. Okay, then I appeal you refusing to ask, is it a second? That's your job. Everybody know that. There is an Galloway. appeal of the decision of the chair on the floor. Is there a second? There is an appeal of the decision on the chair on the floor. Is there a second? There is an appeal of the decision of the chair Madam on the chair, floor. Is second. Councilman Davis. First of all, we all heard and we hear that the appeal does not have the debate in it like the regular discussion items. An appeal gets to speak one time and while you are in an appeal, it has to be decided before another appeal can happen. With that being said, Mr. Davis, you have the floor. Madam Chair, you're absolutely correct, but uh, 
we've been reaching our, our concert rules from day one. And we must, it's imperative that we get together and have a meeting on, on rules committee to correct our breaches. Yes. Because everything we're doing is in violation of right. parliamentary rule. I yield. Thank you. Is there any further discussion? Ms. Ms. Fields? I want to say that regardless of what Mr. May said, I think the majority of council will recall during our parliamentary training that you cannot do a point of order while or a point of information, either one, while an appeal is on the floor. So where we get into trouble, where we have these right. crazy point of orders and appeals, six, eight, ten, all at once, is because we have been doing it incorrectly. And we paid for training from a parliamentarian, an expert, who clearly stated, despite what Mr. Mays apparently hears or understands, is that if there's an appeal on the floor, the chair does not recognize an additional point of yep. order or an additional appeal. And that is what we were taught. Madam Chair. Councilman Mays. Oh. Yeah, that's what Ms. Fields was taught. She don't speak for me. Really, when you're having a meeting, you should just follow the golden rule. Do unto others as you'd have them do unto you. Let council people elected speak. That's all it is. It ain't shouldn't be no blocking or conversation. When Ms. Galloway, maybe you can help get Ms. Fields and Ms. Worthen and others straight. You were in the same meeting that she just described to this public, and when they left, or they didn't hear it, the parliamentary to, parliamentarian told them, because I asked a question, I say, are we in the middle of an appeal? And the chair say, I'm gonna let you speak and you speak, but not you. Can I appeal the ruling of the chair in the middle of that appeal? The answer was yes. And it makes perfect sense. Any decision of the chair that a member feel is unfair can appeal. And you heard that. Herb Winfrey heard it. I don't know where Ms. Fields name was at. Gone again? So it don't even make sense to the public that you can't appeal a ruling of a chair. And I applaud you for taking the appeal because the appeal is to discuss it and sort it out. Let me explain something. A motion is a motion. You got a privilege motion. A point of order is a privilege motion. It can interrupt the speaker. Point of information is a privilege motion. These other motions is main motions. An appeal of the ruling of the chair is a form of a motion. Somebody making it and second it. Our rules do discuss that because our rules, whatever number it is, the clerk is going to get. See, when people need to vote, they need to hear, including you, Ms. Galloway. And that's okay and if y'all got something to talk Thank about. You, but the point is this, when the secretary bring the rules back, y'all ain't read the five minute rule once. Now, y'all can play this game if you want. Read the rule that tells us how many times we talk on a motion, and it's for five minutes, twice. I ain't heard that rule read yet. That's the rule in law. We say that's what's on point. Y'all reading rules that ain't even on point. Read the rule, if you will, Madam Chair, about, and if you don't want to read it, I'll say through you to Mr. Davis our rules chair, because y'all ain't read the five-minute rule and speaking twice yet. That's the one that's on point. Ms. Madam Chair, through you to Mr. Davis, can you read that? Okay, that'll be seven. Um, wait, 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 wait. If you would like to read when your turn comes, Councilman Mays, please finish. I can say, you can't tell me to finish. If I say through you, Madam Chair, to Mr. Davis, you just want to know if Mr. Davis want to talk. Don't tell me what to do. I said politely through you, Madam Chair, to Mr. Davis, and your problem is you want to try to sit in that chair and dictate, and it ain't going to happen with Councilman Mays. I'm going to say it again politely. Through you, Madam Chair, to Mr. Davis, can he read that? No. Don't tell me to finish. Madam Chair, may I? Uh, Mr. Davis. Okay, that'll be Council Rules. Wait, 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 wait. 
Go ahead. Go Council ahead. Rules 7. Go ahead, sir. I'm listening. Okay, dash 13. A council member shall, a council member who desires to speak in debate must obtain the floor by being recognized by the presiding chair. In the debate, each member has the right to speak twice for a maximum of five minutes. Although Robert's rules state 10 minutes if it's a choice by a vote. On the same question on the same day, but here you go. But cannot make a second speech on the same question as long as any member who has not spoken and that question desire the floor. A member who has spoken twice on a particular question on the same day has exhausted his and her right, his or her right to that question that day. So we in debate. Mr. Davis, can you read point number 13 under which you are reading that under? Yes. What does it say? Thir Read yes, that's what the title. Read. read the title. You didn't read the title of number 13. Title 13, re oh, resolutions. Thank you, sir. Mr. Mays, would you like to continue? Yeah. Point of order. Go What's ahead. your point of order? Also, a state resolution, but if you take it over into, we could further that if you want to debate the issue. It actually Robert's Mr. Group. Davis, we are not debating. Mr. Don't interrupt him I, when he's making his point, Ms. Galloway. You give him the flow Council back, Member. and now you don't no. want to hear what he got to say. It's That's why you're messing up at it, and I ain't going to let it happen. Let that man speak. You didn't give him Mays, the flow. Councilwoman you are not Galloway, that's my name. Meeting. Point of order. What is your point of order? You can't get a person to flow and interrupt them because you don't want to hear it what they it have wasn't to say. You're out of order, and I'm going to appeal you, know you again if you don't this let this ridiculous. man speak. That's why we're where don't we at I now. You can't keep interrupting I'm folks. It's, it's crazy. <laughs> you, that's crazy. Clarity is in, in that man you are speak. You are out of order. Okay. I'm going to appeal the order. ruling of the chair. There's no appeal. P point of You're order. It of order. is an appeal. And, and let the chief come up here messing with me, and I'm going to sue you, him, and everybody else. I ain't out of order saying point of order. Point of order is always in order. And I said point of order, and you ruling me out of order, I appeal Madam that. You Maintenance of order and You're debate. You're making a mockery the out of this meeting. The public and city council point are both order. subject to the disorderly person or person's wow. ordinance section 31-10. And is the a general code of conduct. This is what our meetings are like every time. Additionally, the city look the bad. Chair point of order. You got to stop talking when we say point of order. What's your point of order? You out of order. You're not. You, you didn't recognize the first point. You done interrupted him and then took over the flow and it's getting like you would Council think you're an emergency made. manager. Okay, so um, Councilman Mays, you're out of order. No, I'm going you, to read. I appeal the ruling of the chair. I'm not out an, of order. There's I, an appeal. I ain't nothing. There's an appeal of the decision of the chair. Is there a second? I Mr. Second. Davis, it's been seconded. Maintenance of order and debate. The public and city council are both subject to the disorderly person and persons ordinance section 31-10 and the general code of conduct. Addition, I want my colleagues to listen to this reading. We want to Thank listen you. to us. Additionally, the chair or presiding officer has a responsibility and duty to enforce these rules and sanction for the purpose of maintaining order. of order. Only the chair or presiding officer may determine and rule on who and what is in and out of order. Violations of this rule shall result in removal from the meeting. Mr. Davis, point what is order. your point of order? Point of order is this. That's, a, that's void when it comes to a violation of the actual rules. I'm trying to state the rules that this is. <laughs> we operate and function in rules. The rules, you said it, it did not have the, uh, when it said resolution of the, the minister speaking. And I wanted to take you over here to Robert's Rule 389 and it says this, no member can speak more than twice in the same que on the same question the same day except in the case of an appeal. Now watch this, the time that you're speaking stated right here, and it's just saying 10 minutes, it's twice, it's clarity in here. You, our rules don't have clarity. Madam Chair. Right. I've Madam been waiting Chair. to speak. Miss Worthing, 
Uh, I would like to point out that as things got heated, the only officer in the room left, uh, Chief Johnson. Also, the mayor left as this is going on. Mm -hmm. And uh, Mr. Mays is the mayor's, uh, he, he is the council person that the mayor uh, condones. And it's this Chief uh, Backer. And, and they left. And I get accused of leaving all the time when it's a nine and a half hour meeting and they couldn't even last two hours. Um, it's a shame. I would love to see the mayor stay in the meeting so she understands what goes on in these meetings. It's awful. It's horrible. And it's a filibuster. Miss, Miss Point of order. order. That ain't got nothing to do with this appeal. Talking about she I'd a like shame of the going. mayor. Rue her Thank out of order for Thank not you. being You're right, Jermaine. Mr. Mays. But Madam Chair, when she finished, there, when she finished, I'll wait. Let her keep talking about folks. When she finished, I'll wait to get the flow. Let her go. Can Madam I finish, Chair. please? Please. Um, first of all, there should be no point of order acknowledged at this you're right, point. You're right. And unfortunately, again, there's no officer here. Uh, so you'll be hesitant to say you're out of order. What can you do? He's not going to leave on his own. Uh, so this is a conundrum. And we have no power right now. So we are just going to operate in chaos because this is a filibuster once again. And I think that the rest of us council people who would like to go to the order of the city should not allow this to happen. Uh, no police officer, no quorum. Uh, if the chaos is going to ensue, we should not subject ourselves and our constituents to this nonsense. Madam Chair. Councilman. Councilman Mace. Did you give me the floor? I did give you the floor. Okay, Madam Chair, anybody who think you can't call a point of order is just don't get it. And there go one of them walking <sighs> who don't. Miss Worthy. Here she done took, God bless you. Councilman okay, Mace. Don't, God bless you, don't interrupt us. Now, she done dogged the mayor out. Then dogged the mayor out and then got up and left talking about what the, the mayor and them don't have to sit and listen to foolishness. Miss Galloway, you must, according to our rules, the chair can be out of order. If you say point of order and the chair say I'm not entertaining a point of order, read the rule. A point of order shall be entertained. And if you don't, you can be removed. So that's where your problem come in. You done told Mr. Davis a point of order is out of order. You ain't going to find nothing in our rules that say a point of order is out of order. That's where the confusion starts. You and Eva and them and Kate and them arguing, oh, you can't do a point of order. A point of order is always in order. And it says that when you do a point of order, everything shall cease talking. Want me to read it? And it says, if you don't cease talking, you out of order and you shall be removed. So when we say point of order, regardless of whether you like it, Eva Worthen like it, Kate feels like it, I'm going to read you the rule. And I'm going to show you where when you keep over talking us and saying, I'm not going to entertain your point of order, you should have been removed. I'm going to read it to you. That's where the chaos is at, because y'all don't understand the rules. You're picking and choosing what you want to rule, what you want to understand. Rule 25. Rule 25 is on page 18 of 23. I don't need no help. Let me have the flow, because y'all had it, and you could have been and read this. It ain't, it ain't funny to me. It's embarrassing. That's the honorable Mayor Weaver. It is. That's what's on my mail, too. I'm the Honorable Councilman Mays. That is the Honorable Mayor Weaver. It says this, Rule 25, the purpose of a point of order is to correct the breach in the rules. When the presiding officer does, does not correct it, even if it's her breach, or when the presiding officer makes a breach of the rules, a point of order should not be used for minor infractions. These are major infractions. Cutting people off in debate, we're in debate. A point of order does not need a second. It can interrupt the speaker. It is not debatable and is decided by the chair. A point of order in bold black print, 25.4, listen. 
A point of order cannot be ignored by the presiding officer, period. A ruling of agreement or out of order or disagreement must be given. You got to rule one way or another. All debate and or talking shall cease immediately when a point of order is raised in order for the presiding officer to rule. This is what I want y'all to hear. Failure to cease talking shall, it don't say may, failure to cease talking shall result in disciplinary action. Violators shall be removed from the meeting. So when Mr. Davis say point of order, when I say point of order, if you don't follow these rules, Ms. Galloway, and cease talking and rule on it, you shall be removed. It, it say violators shall be removed from the meeting. It don't say people who think there's violators or people who you think is. It's that simple. Point of order, everything stop. Chair say, what's your point? They said, you rule on it. If we disagree with your ruling, we can appeal. And that's what didn't happen. And it's going to continue to happen until y'all follow these rules. So I'm going to tell you something about rules and understanding law. You can't pick this rule to argue what's happening here. They say in law, that ain't on point. Y'all bringing stuff up that ain't on point. This appeal has to do with you trying to ignore a point of order. Well, what was it? You want the secretary to read it back? Do you know what this appeal is? Because it's three of them on the floor. Did you know that? It's three of them. And if the secretary kept good records, it's three appeals. And this last one is because you say you weren't recognizing a point of order. Your time is up. I'll be voting no. Ms. Fields. You're wrong. Thank you. And, and just for the record, for those of you that, um, I don't know which one of my colleagues were here um, when we went to the parliamentarian, one of the things that um, Ms. Coco said is that there was no appeal inside of an appeal. And when Councilman Mays couldn't get the answer from her that he wanted, he used an exa extreme example. And he sa she said, everyone must speak. Everyone must speak one time during the appeal. And so Councilman Mays finally said to her, if there is an appeal of the chair, oh, this meeting is adjourned for a lack of a quorum. That was strategic, great job, Councilman Mays. This meeting is adjourned. Never wants the truth on the record. His extreme was, what if they don't let me speak? What if they don't let me speak? Of course you can appeal if everybody gets to speak and you don't. But he never wants the truth. 
So we just um five minutes? Right. We gotta go to the committees. But you know what what he did? Committee um, to order. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Okay, Mr. Mays. Present. Mr. Davis. Present. Mr. Guerra. Present. Ms. Fields. Present. Ms. Winfrey Carter. Present. Ms. Galloway. Present. Mr. Griggs. Present. Thank you. Is there are there <coughs> any additional changes? Additions or changes to the agenda? Yeah, Madam Chair. Councilman Mays. Yeah, I got a change I want. <clears throat> I got a call from some guys. They sitting back in the back back there, and they um, want to do a quick five-minute presentation as it relates to free audits that they can do for the city of Flint, free audits as it relates to certain items. And so I would try to ask for a special order, five minutes, and I want them to do that special order right before the zero mass. So, so far we have um, the opportunity to listen to a five minute presentation. Any other, Ms. Fields? Given the lateness of the hour and the extraordinary number of special orders, I think there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of them, I would like to make a suggestion that some of these special orders be postponed. And in fact, I would like to hear 190093, and apparently they want 190106. I don't know, but I, and, and I would like to hear 190015, but I think the rest of these should be postponed. One zero, say that with me, 190015. Yes, I would, I would like to hear on the special order 190093, 190106, 190015. And I think the rest of these need to be postponed. Um, so did anybody else have any um, and additions and or changes to the agenda? 
Madam Chair. Councilman Mays. Are you categorizing what she just said as an addition or a change? Correct. I heard what she would like. I would object to that. Um, well, we can we deal with them when we get there, but I'm not going to do a motion to postpone with one person saying it at this time as an agenda change. That would s circumvent. Um, you know, we got vehicles for postponement when we get there. I ain't, that, we don't postpone by what somebody would like. So, so she made a recommendation for the agenda, additions and or changes to right. the agenda. So that's a proper thing that she said. And so when it's voted on as a body, we can- we I'm objecting. And if you need me to do something proper to make a motion to deny that change, I will. Okay. But she just said, right. we got a vehicle for postponement. It's called a motion when we get there. Right. You don't, that ain't, that agenda change I'm objecting to. Thank so you. So when sir. there's an objection, we must figure out the vehicle to decide the objection. Well, accord, we don't have it in our rules, right? So according to the parliamentarian, if there's an objection, we need to vote on the objection. Madam Chair. Councilman May. I would object at this time to keeping Kate Fields ones that she wanted. She says she wants hers a special order by Kate Fields 190015. You got three from Mays. She wants them postponed in an agenda change. I'm objecting. And so I would move that any postponements be done in the regular postponement manner at that time. There's a motion on the floor. Is there a second? Madam Chair, I second. Mr. Davis has seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of supporting what Ms. Fields has asked, say aye. 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 Those that oppose? Nay. Any abstentions? So um, when you don't vote. A division the, of the House, you must vote. Right. I don't know what Mr. Garrett is right. doing. I thought it is, and that's why I was about to rule. So I'm gonna ask for passed. a division of the house. I can do that before you okay. rule. I can make so, it clear. Miss, um, so all in favor, say aye, aye. I mean, I'm sorry. All in favor of Miss Fields postponement or keeping the ones and postponing the others, say aye. Uh, Miss Miss point of point of order. What's your point of order? That ain't her her change. Her, her change. change her change is to postpone. And she ain't saying keeping the other. She's saying postpone some and um, keep, well, I guess she is she saying is. that. She is. But when she say keep the others, this is agenda changes. Correct. And so an agenda change can be a postponement, but we usually do it by motion and You're vote. Right, Councilman and Mayor. so I don't want us to set the president. I understand. And so that's what I'm getting at. Thank How you, Mr. Mr. Guerra vote, we'll see. Thank so. You. So all in to. favor of doing special orders 190093, 190106, 190015, and postponing the no. others. Point, point of order What's and information. Ms. Galloway, that ain't her motion. It, My motion is not to allow her to postpone without a motion like we normally do. Um, that, I ain't making it more difficult because if we win this motion, then we can still postpone when we get there. Right. And so I'm saying don't read it that way because that ain't her motion. Thank you, Mr. Mays. I don't want it to act like we can't but still Councilman postpone. But Councilman Mays, you objected to what she said. That's correct. Not your interpretation. I just repeated what she asked. And so you have objected that to that. That ain't the motion, not what she asked. My motion is not to set, you know, not right, to do the agenda change postponement. Not her words ain't the motion. Don't repeat what she said. Repeat but what my motion Councilman is. Councilman Mays, you can only object what has been set before this body. I didn't, I, I didn't only object. I put it in the form of a motion. You, you have to repeat my motion regardless of what she said. My motion is not to postpone in this manner on agenda change. Postpone the way we normally postpone. There is a motion on the floor to not postpone. All in, it, no, it's been moved and seconded. Thank you for, from the audience. 
All in favor of not postponing, say that aye. Way. That's it. Those that would like to postpone, say aye. aye. It fails. So we are back to the original motion. On, on agenda change. Correct. So, Madam Chair. Councilman Mays. I would like to um, make sure that I can discuss um, 190102, and I would, put, I would change that to right before resolutions. 190102, and then I would also like to um, change 190045 to right after 191, 190102. Wait so I'm putting okay. 190045 so behind 190102. And then the letter that Kate Fieldsnim sent that she's trying to postpone, I would put the 190084 before the 190102. Those would be my changes. Oh, no. Okay, um, I am asking for 190092 to be discussed in the order in which it stands. So, is there any more changes and or additions to the agenda? As it stands, people, we have special order 190093, 190092, 190106, 190084, 190102, 190045, ending with 190015. The five minute presentation, where does that fit? It fit up there right before 190106. So after the first two? If we don't postpone them in the regular way, yeah. So, did you guys get that? Mm -hmm. Those are the changes to the agenda. Um, the um, finance chair, the finance director has asked for, Mr. Newsom, how much time are you asking for? Five to, ten, five to 10 minutes maximum. Okay. For tonight. Okay. And so, um, why don't Ms. Mr. Newsom has asked for an opportunity um, to, and Mr. Newsom, is it okay if um, once you do the budget to actual, you can just finish with that and then we'll move to 190092? Is that okay with this body? Uh, Madam Chair. Councilman Mays. You know, I have no problem putting the 190. 102 back up there. That was your request. Back I had moved where? it to the back. Um, you said you wanted to stay in the same place after I had moved no. it to the back. Councilman Mays, your first thing that you said is you wanted 190095 to be discussed above and after 190102. Then you said you wanted the letter to be addressed before 190102. I just made arrows and repeated the order based on what you said. So if you're changing that now, you can tell me. No, what I did, Miss 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 Fields wanted agenda changes to postpone it. And it it failed. Correct. Or something failed. Correct. My motion failed not to postpone it that way. So that means her agenda changes were still in there. Correct. I further went and changed them. You did. Including 102. When you spoke, you <laughs> wanted it back in its regular spot. I, I have didn't. no objection. I didn't put it back oh, in its Oh, okay, then spot. it would be somewhere at the end because she had wanted it gone. Actually, Councilman Mays, 
I Girl, it ain't a big it. deal. Yeah, I changed it the way you did, and so whatever I'll keep you us on understood, Miss Galloway. You. Okay. As long as all of them is back on there, and That's we can wonderful. change them at their regular time or postpone them, I'm ready to vote on the proposed amendment okay. changes. And so, um, cause. If I'm not mistaken, Councilman Mays, that's the one you said you wanted before the resolutions? I'm going to end up moving to postpone okay. some of them. So, is there any more changes or amendments to the agenda? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, any abstentions? The motion carries. So, we are at... Um, Mr. Newsom, special order 190093, a special order budget to actuals um, as required by the new Flint City Charter. I don't have a supplemental package. Thank you. All right, everybody ready? Give me just a second to pull, pull mine up. Did I received that package as well, right? I just want to look at the same thing the council's looking at. Oh, yeah, that, that'd be fine. What time are we starting? 7.29. Perfect. Good luck, girl. Madam Chair. Councilman Mays. I just want to acknowledge our treasurer in here, Amanda. I don't want her to be too late, but hello, Amanda. Thank you. Amanda. <laughs> so if you turn to the budget report for City of Flint, um, and again, I do want to remind Council that your feedback is appreciated in terms of the format of what this looks like. Here we just have at the at the department level. Um, in this document, we have at the department level what the amended budget is versus activity for the year. So you can see how we're tracking against that at the department level. We have tried this at the account level. I feel that that's very long, and people get um, bogged down. But this might be too this might be too high level. So I do want council to kind of understand that. I do want to point to some key areas that you all should be thinking about when you read these reports, so that you're understanding <clears throat> what they are. So, for instance, I know um, certain council members have expressed an interest in understanding how we're doing with our revenues, particularly in the general fund. That's that's the first line of the report. Um, not on purpose, it just works out that way with the, with the coding, but you can see that we're about halfway through what we put in the budget in terms of what we're going to collect. In this report, negative means revenue, expenditures are positive. So you'll see that negative nine, negative $19.28 million activity through 630.19 versus the amended budget of 30, $38.7 million. So what we're saying here is that we've collected 19.28 million against the 38.7 that we had in the budget. So that's what you see on the top line. Going through the different departments, you can see, because most departments are net expenditure based, right, throughout the general fund after you get off the top line, you'll see what departments have spent what versus what they were um, budgeted to spend. Um, Mr. Newsom, can I just ask sure. you a quick question? Mm -hmm. um, so. Normally red means? Normally red means negative bad. But if you think, this is a rule of thumb for this particular That's what I just want you report. to clarify for them. So mm -hmm. it's a negative expenditure, so it's revenue. So okay. that's an inflow. So it's a good. Red it's is good. good. In this document. In this document. Yes. Thank, okay. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. Mm -hmm. um, but you will see that, for instance, license and permits is red. And so under that one, you know, license and permits, that's where we're collecting um, fees. And I believe, if I remember correctly, that department is where our um, cable franchise fee flows into. So that's the reason you see that as red. You'll also see some enforcement revenue coming into Treasury operations. That is the reason why that is red. So again, 
I think there are certain things I definitely want to point you all to. Um, you've got detailed information in front of you. Obviously, we want to go to page three. And one thing that is of concern, if you look at it at a glance, is the fact that it appears that we're behind um, in the general fund, the $2.3 million at activity um, that you see on, on um, well, let me back up a second and, and point something out. Just a little caveat. When you see the phrase activity through 630 2019, the reason that you see it like that is because we want to get all the activity for that fiscal year and we don't want to update the, me the mechanics of the report. So we set it to run as of 630-19 and that way you get everything. So obviously there's no activity past today, right? So if I set the report to run as of 630-19 and always leave it there, I always get the most current information because there will be no, inf there's nothing posted in the future. So I wanted to point that out. Um, I'm, I'm not too alarmed by the 2.3 million because usually what happens, um, Ms. Galloway, I know you and I talked about this a little bit, what happens is um, that we usually see an uptick pattern-wise in, um, in our income tax revenue during the year. So I, I, why I suspect that we are going, because we've seen this in the past, well, I suspect that we will be fine. That's why I always want to caveat when you all get these reports, because people run and see that we're behind in revenue collection and, then, and there's that concern. But you don't always have a straight line pattern for revenue collection. So I wanted to point that out. The other thing I want to point out too is, I know Ms. Fields, you asked for, and I actually agree with you strongly, that what you'd want to do, instead of doing a straight projection of your revenue collection, show me where we are on the curve. So if you're telling me I'm going to collect 80% of my revenue in the last month for income taxes, then I still want to track against that curve versus a straight line. And so we've struggled with how to make that work. We are working on how to do such a projection, but I do want to say that I hear you, and it is something that, you know, for our purposes, as well as, um, as well as um, for your purposes, it is important for you to see that. So you don't get alarmed. You see where you are on the path versus where you're supposed to be. And we are very close, and I'm, I'm hoping to have it for the budget to actuals for, um, that are due really today. Ms. Fields, I'm going to get you. Mr. Newsom, i yes. got to clarify one more thing. Sure. So on page three, where you're talking about that 2.294? Yes. Now, now that red is bad or that yeah. red is that, good? No, that red is bad now. That red is bad. And it's just the way BSNA works. And sometimes I feel like I need a PhD just to understand BSNA. But it's just the way BSNA works. Um, and just, again, I know that you know, these things need explanation. Um, and this is a challenge for us because b the reporting and the reporting capability of BSNE is not that great. So okay. um, I just wanted to make sure I clarify because it's like half the yes. red is good, half the red yeah. is bad. Yeah. So it, when you're in the expen when you're looking at the different departments, mm -hmm. red is good because it's a revenue, but we f it flips when you get to the bottom line. Perfect, Miss Fields. Uh, Mr. Newsom, on page 17. Yes. I think that's the right page to look at. Mm -hmm. You have uh, estimated revenues, all funds, appropriations, net of revenues, appropriations, beginning fund balance, ending fund balance. Okay. Yep. So what I'm trying to understand is um, and want to know, and maybe it's on another page, but I want to know where we stand with our revenue projections, mm -hmm. okay, and where we are currently. So overall, number one overall, and sure. then I have a number two, but mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I was just going to say that's exactly what we we're talking about. I think income, you, you're looking at income tax, you're looking at the millages, you're looking at the assessments. And um, this would tell you that information because when you look at something, you look above the line and it's red, it's a net revenue department. So that first line is where, our, is where we're recording our income tax for the general fund, our, our um, property tax for the general fund, some of our fees for the general fund it's embedded in that 000 .300. So you can see what we've collected versus where we thought we'd be. But again, to, to the point that I'm anticipating your thinking, well, I still, that still doesn't tell me where I am versus where I should be. It just gives me a straight dollar amount. So for instance, if I, if I know that I'm gonna collect winter taxes, um, I'm sorry, summer taxes. So 
we have collected, if you will, the summer tax bills that we, that we sent out last August, July, August time frame. So all that should have already been collected. If I'm halfway through the 4.8 million that I put in the budget, uh, the extra 4.9 I put in the budget, at this point, I'm in trouble. Now, you can't see it because it's not broken out, and that goes back to my original point. You can't see it because it's not broken out, but we are well above 100% of our collection on summer taxes. Now, I'm just making, making an example. I can't tell you that. It won't be clear that there's a problem in that situation if I just give you a straight percentage of where we are at this point in the year, three-fourths of the year, if we should be 100% done, if you don't understand how the cost curve or the collection, the, the historic collection activity behaves. If we're supposed to get 100% of our, of our, of our tax millage um, by December, and that's what we've historically gotten, and, we've all, and by, you know, by December we've only gotten half of it, that's a problem, but you wouldn't see it in a budget to actual report. So we need to find a way to quantify that so you can see, hey, wait, Newsom, it's December 31st. Yeah, we're halfway through the fiscal year, but you should have collected all your summer taxes, right? So I, we have to find a way to do that, and that's what I was explaining to you, uh, Madam Chair, last week. We have to find a way to do that because a straight report out of BSAA doesn't do that. So there's this balance between how do we get you that information um, versus having that task that we're, you know, we're challenged to meet those, all of our requirements as it is. Okay, thank you, I appreciate that explanation. But one thing on page 17, sure. could you please explain on the third line down, there are two, you know, we have the original budget for 1819, yep. the amended budget, the activity through June 30th of 19, and then projected activity. And right. in two lines, you have, uh, a negative number. That's uh, correct. So the, what we're saying the amended is, budget and uh -huh. the projected activity net of revenues appropriations all funds. So does that mean we're coming up short? Yeah, when when BSNA is is aggregating all the funds together. So, you know, let's assume and, and it's the case we can get there. Let's assume that we're behind um, that we said we were going to be behind in the water and the sewer fund, right? We said we we're going to be ahead in 542, which is building and safety inspections. I have to go back through the numbers we can look. What this is saying net net is that I am behind by two million and with all the funds. Now, as you know, we can't move money back and forth. So this number, I, I rarely look at this all funds number together because I have to think about the funds individually because as you know, I can't just move money back and forth anyway. So I have to think, okay, is, my, is a 542 in good shape or bad shape? Is two, not, is, is two um, 295 in good shape or bad shape or whatever. But that's what this is when you look at all funds. And, and so okay, it, it well, aggregates everything. And I understand how you get an aggregate number, mm -hmm. okay, and then you have to kind of search back to pinpoint where the problem area exactly. is. Exactly. Okay, but, you know, what do you have to say about what are we going to do? The projected activity for 1819 is in the red for right. 1.1 million. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. How, how are we going to handle that problem? Yeah. So, if you look at the if you look at the budget that we just presented, Ms. Fields, all you know, we are working very diligently. I think the biggest headache right now, and I hate to say headache, but the biggest headache is going to be uh, your enterprise fund. So, I mean, if I were to put together a strategy of how to deal with this, I'd first start with water and sewer because that's where our biggest losses are. If you go back through the report, you'll see that that's where we're projecting the biggest losses. And so, you know, as we talked about, we need to get very aggressive with how we're doing in terms of spending less than what we bring in. But, I mean, if, you know, as I've told the new deputy many times, I feel like every day that I don't talk about legacy costs and I don't talk about water and, and collections in water and sewer and how to get the revenue in, it, it's a lost day because this number gets worse if I keep my costs the same, my non-legacy costs the same, and I keep my revenue the same, and, my, and, my, and I'm spending an extra, you know, next year we're going from 24.7 .7 to 30 and a half million. So if I keep everything flat, this number goes up another five million in the red, right? If I keep the numbers the same, that's scary to me. So 
and that's why I say that you know we have to we have to figure out collectively council and administration how we how we do what we do to get those things fixed and administration has bought some things to you all um, for you know for how we're going to improve the um, for how we will we'll improve collections and number of new water and sewer for billing and we'll continue to bring that and again I want to say on the record we do appreciate you all's cooperation with getting the water meters um, you know, getting the funding for the water meters closed out um, but we'll be bringing more things to you in terms of legacy costs in the next, I won't be here, but we are working very diligently on things in terms of how we're going to deal with legacy costs. That's really the bottom line because this is a thin number, 1.2 million. I mean, we're not going to die from 1.2 million. I think we'll recover, but you start talking about another five on top of this, it becomes, it becomes pretty bleak. <clears throat> Excuse me. Well, I noticed that in, in your chart, which you know we'll talk about in detail later, but yes. one last question here. What I'm concerned about is that we are carrying, and I, I believe I did do a referral, I haven't seen it yet, mm -hmm. but I want to know, okay, on accounts receivable on water accounts, Yes. okay, I want to know the amount we're carrying as if this were revenue that's expected to come in mm -hmm. on the water accounts, Yeah. Mm -hmm. yet what's the aging on that? I mean. Right. Do we have, you know, that we're, are we carrying accounts as accounts receivable from five years ago that we don't stand a chance in hell of ever collecting, but we're still putting it on the books as account receivable, which help kind of shows that you're balancing the budget. I mean, I, I want to see a report on that, how, how far back we carry them. I don't know if we have a policy about that, how much that total amount is, because that certainly affects the revenue estimations. So I don't want to volunteer anybody, but the treasurer is here. I'm not prepared to talk about that off the top of my head, but we can give some detailed uh, figures for you in terms of the aging report. I look at the aging report um, that the treasurer um, um, produces on a regular basis. Um, I do apologize. I don't know. I know you asked for a referral. Did I get this referral? I don't know if I got this referral from the office. Mm -hmm. Do you remember? This referral. Okay, so I, I don't. I'm not sure what happened. I know we talked about it, but what I've been the way I've been managing the referrals is um, that if I receive the official referral on letterhead, I'll respond to it. I think the last one I got was one that was going to come up tonight. So we've been trying to do a better job of responding to referrals on a timely basis. So I apologize. I'm not sure what happened with it, but I would. I don't. Again, I don't want to volunteer people. But um, you know the treasurer's here. Maybe we can have an offline conversation because I think that that's something that um, I know you've shown interest in, and I do want to make sure that you get your questions answered. This is a very serious issue. It is a serious issue, and you know I would make that official referral. I've been trying to cut down on the referrals as you've requested. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I since that. I know you're dealing with a lot, trying to wrap things up for yourself. Mm -hmm. But now that we're going into the budget period, I think this question is vital, especially yes. since um, the negative areas are basically in water the, the water fund. So uh, I think it's really important that we understand how much we're carrying as accounts receivable that, in fact, we probably are never going to receive. So, um, and, you know, we had many discussions all through the year about steps we were going to take for collection and shutting off you know, illegal water, whatever, and then it kind of just all disappeared. But uh, as we go into the budget period, I think this is going to be really key. So whether you receive this as an official referral or not, because our staff is way behind as well, because they're also short-staffed right. and have many duties. But before we go into this budget thing, I would really appreciate it if I could have that report. Uh, Mr. Hilo is here. Um, would you be able to get that for me, Ms. Trujillo? Okay. She answered yes. Thank you. Thank you. Councilman Mayor. Yeah, Madam Chair. Um, through you, I think this is an appropriate time under the circumstances. Through you to our treasurer, Amanda, if she could. Could you come? Madam Chair, while she's coming, in light of what's been said, I would move 190094 and 190095 to council. Um, point of order. What's your point of order? Is there a second? Councilman Mays, you're off of the agenda. 
that we all agreed on. Point so, of order. What's your point of order? A motion is in order when I got the flow. No, this is water discussion. You heard him talk about Amanda in this special order. And so I'm trying to move us um, expeditiously. This is in order with the special order. She don't need to, if you go for a second, we can discuss it. But that's my point. You got to ask, is there a second? That's basic. To move the resolution, but we haven't gotten to the resolution. We're not to the resolution yet. Okay. We're still in spe on special orders, aren't we? Um, There's nothing right now. <laughs> it's basic. If you guys give me one second, and, and council, I, I don't, I don't, I just want to say to you all, we did additions and changes to the agenda. Point of order. What's your point of order? It's a motion on the floor. The order is, is there a second? And Councilman then we May? go into discussion. You cheating, and you out of order. And if you don't ask for a second, and you refuse oh. to ask for a second, we got a problem, because I'm going to appeal you. That's the business. It's a motion on the floor. Your job is to ask, is there a second? Um, there's a motion to um, approve. No, nope, to move 190194 and 190095 to council. Not to approve, to move it to council. To move it, I'm It's sorry. a committee meeting. You know what? Yeah, it's the very first one. There's a motion on the floor to move 190094 and 190095 to council. Um, Madam Chair. Ms. Winfrey Carter. I would like to second that motion. It's, it's been moved and seconded. Um, Madam is there, Chair. Is there any discussion? Yeah, Madam Chair, the reason I did that, Amanda I'm shouldn't have to sit here through all these special orders. And since Mr. Newsom and Ms. Fields' dialogue had to go um, to the water fund, and she's here, and this special order involved the treasury. I want to get her out of here as soon as I can. I know she worked long days and will be back tomorrow. And so I wanted to do that as a courtesy to the staff, and it's just a good practice to move it to council. Um, Madam Chair, through you to um, our treasurer, Amanda, and our main manager in the water department. Um, you want these amendment, budget amendments, um, as it relates to mailings and um, problems that you've ran into um, with all of the mailings you've had to send out. You refer it to the 10% policy, and that's been some additional expenses. You want us to pass this when it gets to council? Okay, so I'm going to vote in favor of moving these resolutions to council, and I will be voting to pass them. And if we get this done, that's why you're here. You could maybe then leave if there's no other questions for you. And since he talked, I wanted to get this out the way. It's called moving expeditiously. Parliamentary inquiry. What is your parliamentary inquiry? Okay. I... I do believe that this is goes against what we had agreed on on agenda uh, changes, um, but I also have a request for information. What are the two numbers that he's trying to pass in the resolutions? The very first two. Nine, four, nine, five. Correct. Okay, and has been seconded because I have discussion. It has been. Go ahead, Councilwoman Fields. Okay, um, Mr. Newman, Newsom, excuse me, Paul, right? Um, during committee, you had explained the glitch in the BSA system yes. that led to two separate printings of tax bills, right? That's correct. All right, so now, and you said it was 25000 it was going to cost us to reprint due to that. Roughly correct, yes, that's correct. Mm -hmm. okay, that's what I so said. And that's yeah, that's that is correct. 
All right, so now I'm ty- trying to understand this 100000 Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay, could you explain why this printing cost is now 100000 Is it so for I, more than the I, reprinting I, of the glitch? I want, I want the treasurer to sign in because she's closer to it than I am, but I will say that <clears throat> part of the volume, you have to also understand that because we have so, so, we're sending out so many notifications to people, Telling them that we might shut that we're going to shut their water off, shut off notifications. The postage and the printing is so much higher now, um, and unfortunately, it's higher than we anticipated. So again, going back to what we talked about before, about aggressively aggressively collecting um, for the water and sewer funds. This is one of the things that happens. There's more activity. There's more more postage. There's more more printing that has to happen. And unfortunately, we underestimated how much that was going to be. So I'll, I'll, if, if I may, Madam Chair, I'm going to let the Treasurer also chime in on that. Okay. Uh, Ms. Trejo, be, before you do, yes. um, when you say there is, well, postage, I don't think the cost of postage has gone up yet, has it? I no, that's per, that's, per, that's per piece. But if you send out more notifications, okay. then obviously your cost So then that leads to my next question. Mm-hmm. So we must have somewhere where we have estimated, based on actuals over a period of time, how many water shutoffs yes. we get in any given month, mm-hmm. right? So now you're saying, if I understand correctly, that there have been many more water shutoffs than you had anticipated. Therefore, the price for these notices and printing of these notices and the, pa- the uh, postage on these notices has increased. So my question then is, how, how much above what we had expected is occurring every month? I mean, like if we, if we had on average 100 shutoffs or accounts stopping every right. month, mm-hmm. are we now experiencing 200 accounts every month? So, or? And again, I, I want to monitor to chime in on this, but you, we, we have return letters that are a challenge. We, have, um, mul- we might send multiple notifications because we can't get the work order processed. And so there's a delay with the shutoff. So again, I, Amanda, I know the operations, but she knows the operations when it comes to customer service. So I want her to chime in and you know delve into a little bit more. But it's a, it's a little bit more complicated than that. And if if I may, Madam Chair, I'll let the treasurer chime in as well. Please. Okay. Um, so we send out we have parameters for when we send out letters for anyone with has a a past due balance. So that way we know wh- who's going to get a letter. Um, in the interim, because we know that we have gone over budget, that we have changed those parameters. So even if you do have a past due budget, you, not, you might not get a letter. It just depends on if you, where you hit in that parameter, because we're trying to you know, save money here and still trying to collect. Um, the, this current bill plus 10% has helped the people who are trying to get, you know, keep their water on. Um, but some people, you know, they, it, it doesn't matter. I mean, they're, they're going to pay when they want to pay. But we still have to send the letters out just so we can say that we have sent them out. You know, to make sure that they know that we, they are eligible to be turned off if they do not pay. Uh, with the winter months, we've had, um, you know, lesser amounts of turnoff because with the ground frozen, it's more difficult. So hopefully now that... You know, the frost is starting to, you know, it start, the ground's starting to not be as frosted. Um, we will be able to um, do more turnoffs um, each, each day. And that's what we're hoping that we can, you know, build that back up. Okay, I understand that, but you haven't quite explained, okay, at some point you must have estimated a certain number or percent of total water accounts, okay, that are going to be shut off in any given month. Okay, um, and this is not taking into account whether you have the staffing to actually go out and do turn off the water, but the ones that are active accounts that now should be inactive because you've turned off their water or you intend to turn off their water. What I want to know is, is this number increasing? And if so, how much beyond, how many beyond what you expected on any given month? Are we getting increasing numbers of inactive accounts that will eventually lead to water turnoffs once we get the staff to do it? Uh, when you say inactive, are you saying people who are not paying? People who are not paying and you're going to turn their water off. Oh, are those numbers increasing? Yes. 
Yes, by, and each, by a percent, by a number. But each cycle is different. Um, in certain areas of the city, you have a higher percentage of people paying on a regular basis. Other ones, that you have a larger cycle, and then that number kind of gets skewed a little bit because we have one cycle that's larger than the rest, and their um, uh, lack of, their balances are higher now. So it just depends. Each cycle is different. Okay. But let's say we have, and the last I heard was 26,000 active water accounts. Is that accurate? About 27,000. About 27,000 active water accounts. Residential active, yes. I'm sorry? 27 residential. Residential. Okay, let's just deal with residential for the moment. Okay. Can you tell me, like, you anticipate in a given year or quarter or six months or something that 10% of those accounts are going to be, they're not going to pay and going to turn off. So from wherever you started, can you say what the percentage is now? Is it occurring with more frequency than you had anticipated? Um, I think it has increased more than we anticipated. Um, we have a lot of accounts where we're getting return mail, so, and we don't have, unfortunately, we don't have the staff to even go out there to see, you know, is it really vacant or what's going on with that? I mean, so we have a lot of those that, we would like to send work orders out on that, but we don't have the staff to do that either. Can you quantify that for me in some way? Um, let, me, let me throw something at you and see if this works. I think you're asking about uh, recidivism is, is really not the term I want to look for, but you're really asking for a number of people that um, we turn them off and then we have to come back and turn them off again, like a, this cyclicality, if you will. I keep having to return to the same address and turn that person off, on, off and on again. Is that what you're getting at? I just want to make sure I understand Just the totality. Like, uh -huh. in any given month, we're turning off 100 people's water, we, like, yeah, if we, we have the staff. We, so could, we, could, we, could definitely, we could definitely provide you the CNP work order list, the, quanti the quantities of the number of, and at, at one point, we were providing that to council where we were providing you a report that showed the number of CMPs requested, the number of CMPs executed on a rolling basis. Right. Right. Um, and we, when we start the trial policy, we can definitely reinvigorate that effort so you can have access to the number of people that, um, you know, the number of people that are eligible for shut off and then the number of people that then um, we are able to shut off in a period of time. That would be good, and I'd like to make that referral then to Treasury. And also, if possible, with finance help, I'd like to know what amount of money, mm -hmm. quantify the amount of money that represents as well. Understood. Mm -hmm. Yes, we can, we can, in terms of lost revenue. Right. Got it. Because that helps point us of to order, understand Matt. the point budget. Point of order. What's your point of order? Have you been keeping time on this motion? Councilman Mays, you're aware that our rules say that if you're dialoguing back and forth, that time does not count Have you been you. keeping time? I have. You How heard the time? buzzer go off. She, her time is just now starting. She's been talking back and forth. Thank you. You want to read the rule to that one? Are you done? Madam Galloway, that uh, time didn't just start. You sound crazy. No, now, I did. Who got Councilman, the floor? Mr. Griggs does. Okay, I want Thank the floor you. when my time comes, and I'm going to see when mine starts, because she went long. Thank you. Go ahead, Mr. Griggs. Uh, since we're approaching, my phone. since we're approaching about a third of a million dollar contract with this printing company, should we maybe consider after this year to go out for bids to other printing companies? Yeah, the bids are up this year for the printing. The, the bids are up for printing this year. Oh, oh, okay. All right. So we'd be entering into a contract effective June thirtieth, with with a new with a potentially a new um, supplier. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Griggs, Mr. Um, Mr. Mays. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, my question in this whole discussion, um, Amanda is that it seemed like I found out that we don't cut water back on on a daily basis till after four o'clock. Is that a fact? Yes, we have overtime orders. Beg your pardon? Yes, that's correct. Right, water is cut on after four o'clock. And sometime it takes two and three days to get an appointment to cut water on. But we cut water off before four o'clock. 
My position is this. We need revenue. Shutoffs take away revenue. Some people believe you shut it off and make people come in and pay. It'll make me come in and pay. I'm behind now. You shut mine off, I'm going to everybody I know to try to get it back on. Because I got my son, my grandkids, my Republican brother, I'm a Democrat. I got all them in the house. So shut offs do make us come pay to cut on. But my point is this. I would rather do a reverse. When people come and pay, they want to get back home. So I would cut them on because the ones that's getting shut off, if they have to wait to after four, we steady making money because they own. It don't make sense that we shut off before four and shut back on after four and people have to wait three days after they come pay to get cut back on. So I'm politely <laughs> suggesting we explore that. I want people to be cut on when they pay and shut off when they don't pay. I just don't agree with the policy of taking so long to cut back on when people pay. So my, I'm articulating correct in that. When they pay, whether it's before, foe, or after foe, shut them on as soon as we can. And then if we have to pay to shut people off, shut them off two, three days later. In other words, reverse the order because it's a win-win. We steady making money because they delinquent and ain't been shut off yet, but people who paying, we cutting them right back on because that's a health and safety issue. So that's all I want to do and chime in on. I'm gonna be supporting your extra money. And not only am I gonna support your extra, extra money doing budget process, some of them folks down in your department do a fine job. We might not can give them a raise, but we might give them a Christmas bonus. Because, you know, I done been down there. Folks fussing, arguing, and so a lot of water money. And people talk bad about customer service, but I'm gonna support them. And I'm gonna try to reward them for helping getting us through this water crisis. I will be voting to move this to council and Monday, I will be voting to approve it. Thank you, Madam Chair. Any further discussion? Hearing none, Madam Clerk, roll call. Oh, no. All in favor of moving this to council, say aye. Aye. Those that oppose, it moves to council. So we are, thank you. We are on Huey. I guess, um, is there any further questions for um, Mr. Newsom on the special order? Budget to actual report, Mr. Oh. I, I do want to tell council one thing. We've been feverishly trying to get the budget to you, um, literally up till the time we presented it. We've been feverishly working on it. So we ex expect to see the um, next budget to actual report, which was due yesterday, by the end of the weekend. Thank you, Ms. Um, Fields. Um, I do have one question. Um, the budget we got is uh, pretty much an aggregate budget. When are we going to get a detailed budget? Will it be prior to the hearings or during so the hearings? We could. Uh, I'm glad you asked that question. I don't know if you want to segue until my. Until, or we, you said you want to keep it in this, the in yep, under this fine. discussion. Okay, yep. great. So I'm glad you asked that question. What we have, what we would like, to, what we did last year was we provided them at the hearings. If council would prefer to have them in advance in or before the reviews then what we can do is provide you a supplemental booklet. Um, um, I, we'll try and get it by end of day tomorrow at the latest or you know, maybe first thing Monday morning so that you have that in advance of the reviews. Um, and of course, I have requested, a little selfishly requested, that we start the reviews next week. Normally, remember when you were finance chair, Ms. Fields, we had a good week at least um, between the time that the council was presented the budget and when we started the started the hearings, I would like to at least have some of the smaller or organizations like you know, pay, you know, accounting and payroll come before you, and we present um, to you next week. So if that if we are able to work that out, 
I could get, we can get you at the very latest first thing Monday morning, a detailed book that will supplement the um, budget book that you've received. That way you have the detailed book that, that marries two, and we'll make sure that there are references between the two so you know what ties to what. Does that make sense? I, I would appreciate that, having that ahead of time, the detailed budget. Mm -hmm. um, thank you. And Madam Chair, our, uh, just an inquiry. Are you meeting as finance chair with the various departments prior to each hearing? Um, I haven't decided that. Okay. And so, with, with, um, if I may, Madam Chair, mm -hmm. so I think going back to your original suggestion, if we are going to try at least get a budget hearing or two out, if it's just finance and accounting and, say, the assessor's office, which is under my umbrella, mm -hmm. as well as a Q&A session, um, you and I have already met. Those are, the le those are less complicated budgets. That way, council does not have to have a lot of time to review mm -hmm. um, those departments. Then that way, maybe that works because you and I have already had a chance. And if you want to get into a cadence going forward where you meet with Rob before you talk about water plant, or you meet with Suzanne before you talk about um, you know, street light, the street light assessment, the street light fund, or something of that nature, then you can do that. So I, I, I eagerly await council's feedback, but again, I would like to schedule um, something next week if, it's, if council can, can make that work. And we'll um, discuss that. Um, I did, and I want to thank Amanda. I was able to meet with Amanda. And I want to um, thank Stacy. I was able to meet with Stacy. Um, I, I did make um, meet, talk with Steve, who said that I could meet with um, department heads. Um, those two were very accommodating immediately. So I'll just leave it at that. Um, so is there any further discussion on the special order, actually? So we are now at 190092. Um, Mr. Newsom, um, I put that on as a special order. Um, part of the GLEWA. Point of order. What's your point of order? It's not proper for a constituent to leave without permission. And I yield the floor. A constituent? Colleague. Colleague. Um, she, she did talk to me before. And so. She I, won't be returning. No, she won't be returning. Okay. But she did speak to me before, Mr. Davis, just so you know. I was just checking. Thank, Thank you. you. If you guys want us to stop the meeting to let you know, we can make a point to do that. Whatever. And so that's no problem. Okay. So um, I just wanted you to know that. So, Mr. Newsom, mm -hmm. part of the 30 year GLEWA deal yeah. um, that um, was approved by um, some of my colleagues, yes. um, one of the things that they were requesting and told would hopefully happen was that General Motors would come back on as um, a customer to our water source. Correct. Um, then we were told by Rich Baird that um, they decided that they would not come back. Um, and during um, the address, it was said that General Motors has come back and is now a commercial customer once again. Correct. The reason why um, I requested this, and you and I spoke about it, is last I'd heard and hadn't found out whether it was true or not, we um, owed General Motors in the arena of $1.2 million. Right. And so I wanted to know, based on that, one, it was that true that we actually did owe them, and two, with them coming back, how does that $1.2 play into their return because originally they generated about $400,000 in revenue. So I'd just like to understand what their return look like and how that revenue will affect us since we're going into the budget time. So before, I, I will, if I may, Madam Chair. Please, sir. Um, I don't want to get too deep into the technicalities. I think Mr. Benzik is better um, suited to talk about the technicalities. I call it an administrative, a, a, rev a review of how um, they use sewage, um, I use our sewer system at GM. So I don't want to go too deep into that because that's a little bit outside of my area exp expertise. Well, I want to be very careful here. I want to remind council that the way we typically bill our, you know, the default, if you will, what goes in goes out unless we, unless it's a, a specific um, unless we're specifically metering sewer, sewer usage, what goes in goes out, so we'll use the water 
the meters for the water usage to estimate what the sewer usage is. And so GM um, met with us and discussed that that isn't appropriate for them because they, they are an industrial user. And so a lot of their water is, it, is used to, you know, it goes away through evaporation or is consumed in the manufacturing process, <clears throat> excuse me, or whatnot. And so we walked through exactly from a technical standpoint um, where that water goes and when some percentage does not go you know, there's a certain percentage that does not get into our sewer system. So, and again, Mr. Benzik is probably more more apt to talk about the, the details of that. I don't want to get too deep, too, too far into the weeds of that. But I don't want to say that there was an error in billing. I want to be very careful here okay. that there was a review of how sewer was used and measured or estimated as opposed to an error in billing. So when we, when we, um, agreed upon a mechanism for how we should be or assessing how much sewer usage was done at GM. Um, and I also want to be careful too because it's not just GM, it's the paint shop, it's the engine plant, it's um, assembly, so there are multiple places that use sewer and water differently. So I want to be very careful there too. Um, so with that being said, we met with, with GM officials and we, you know, we said that you know, we will consider this um, you know, we, we will take this into consideration and we felt that um, it was appropriate for us to adjust how we were billing them based on the research that they were able to provide and what we were able to provide with our own uh, city officials that were experts. And so that's how we got to that point. And I want to also remind council this actually came to fruition and I did respond to your referral. This came to fruition last fall, October of 2018. And so this is, you know, this has been out there. We've been, we've been billing them for water. We've been, you know, we've been also um, distilling, those, distilling those credits. What we talked about was we have to, you know, giving $1.2 million worth of credits on the sewer side can't do it at one time. So we talked about spreading it out so that we didn't have such, a, have a huge cash impact in our sewer fund. So that's what that, that was discussed. We wanted to make sure we limit the cash impact to, to, to sewer. Now, before my time, we had been talking about water, right? I'm near Gene returning to the city water. And as part of the Gleewood deal, as you remind, as, you know, as, as you remind me and everyone else, as part of the Gleewood deal, GM's concern was that we did not have a long-term contract with, with, a, um, water, with a water provider, right? And so their concern was that you, we couldn't continue to be on a month-to-month -month basis with Gliwa and then have them come back and there wasn't a long-term water source. So if you remember the timing, we agreed to go back to Gliwa on a long-term contract in December of, 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 of 17, and that's when the discussions really got, really got caught momentum for us to talk about when they were returned to see the Flint water. There was some back and forth, some discussions, and of course they wanted us to, you know, they, just, they wanted us to of course make sure that we consider the review. But I want to be very careful here that all the workings for GM to come back on, on legal water was, I'm sorry, on, back on our water was driven by the fact that they needed us to have a long-term water source, which was the Gleewa contract. Right, I just want to know Mr. Newsom. How, uh, how does that 1.2, did we, do we, and I don't know, I'm asking you in the public eye because this was a big deal, right? Mm -hmm. It was in the newspaper <coughs> in 2014, right? Mm -hmm. So my simple question is, one, was it agreed upon that the city would reimburse in however form $1.2 million to General Motors? And yes, two, yes. if the answer is yes, what does that look like for the city, especially based on where we are talking about our water fund is right now, how does that impact the budget that we are currently in mm -hmm. and the budget that is going forward and how long are those credits, however they are, how long do they last before we're actually paid up, if you will? So just, just as a little FYI, I'm pretty sure we put this in the presentation last year or discussed it last year, but we had assumed when we, had, when we proposed the budget a year ago that we were going to do those credits because we had started the conversation. So if you look at some of the notes or even the presentation 
that we provided um, the first April 2nd, I'm pretty sure I put um, GM, GM sewer credits in there. I know, I, I know we talked about doing the hearings because we felt that it was, it was coming close and we were in those discussions. So in terms of impact to the budget, it is embedded in because we saw that last year and see that this year. Now be very, let's be very careful here that if you look at it strictly from a water standpoint, this is a positive right. because we get the additional revenue. Now, of course, the sewer fund is, is not in the best of shape right. either, right. so the credits do hurt. But the last thing we want to do is have you know our in-house experts say, yeah, okay, that is an appropriate, that's an appropriate review of sewer usage. And you know, we agree, but we refuse to give them those credits because now you're talking about litig potential litigation. And that's what we did not want to even right. breach into with someone we consider a long-term partner um, in terms of working with us um, you know, long term. How long is the credit, Mr. Newsom? Um, four years, if I remember correctly. It four should. Years. It should. I don't have it right in front of me. My tablet's acting up, but it should be in your referral response. If okay. it wasn't, let me know. Okay. But it, I, I'm pretty sure I put that some that analysis in your referral response. You got it in there. Okay. Thank you, sir. No Madam problem. Chair. Councilman Mays. Yeah, Madam Chair. On this special order, I would ask that it stay on. I'm hearing some about we owe GM 1.2 million in credits and so forth and so on. I would ask that that stay on as I familiar myself more with these discussions as it relates to GM. And that's all. I'm ready to move on if there's nobody else, but I want that to stay on. Thank you. Any further discussion? Hearing none, we're at the five minute presentation by our guests that are here, Council Madam Mays. Chair, that would be, um, I think they pronounce it Artel and Fred and Whoever else you have with you, Fred, if you want to introduce them or however y'all got it set up. I know when we talked yesterday, you said you'd have people with you. So whoever you want to introduce, whatever you want to say, um, can we get that mic for phone? Hold on. Can you hear me? Okay. We on? Start? Okay, my name is Fred Krug. I'm here tonight with a couple of my associates who are in the back of the room. Art Winslaff, Tom Maher. We're representing a company called... Border. Wait, Fred, let, let, let everybody pay attention. You ain't got but five minutes. Just relax. Mr. Mays, you're not running the meeting. You can continue. I ran that because everybody was talking, and you ain't shouldn't be rude when he's talking. Councilman Mays, so I'm not. So since I ain't running, and Councilman I can say Mays, point of order. order. You want me to say point of you're order again? Of order. Point of order. What's you should have recognized order? my point of, point of order properly. That. Um, it's rude to be speaking and talking as a vice and a chair when this man is looking for you for direction. He was just standing there. You didn't even see him. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So that's my you point. How you rule on that? Madam Chairman, thank you very much for inviting us here tonight, and we're looking forward to presenting. Again, my name is Fred Krug. I'm here with my associates, Tom Maher, Art Winslaff. We're representing a company called Util Auditors. Uh, during the discussion tonight, I heard, I think several council members mentioned uh, they were here to increase revenue to the city. And the service that we're proposing that the committee and ultimately hopefully the council will consider uh, has an 85% chance of doing exactly that. Um, one thing I want to make clear before I tell you what our process is with UTIL auditors is what it is not. Uh, some of you may have be familiar with what they call an energy audit. An energy audit, uh, consumer's energy comes in, looks at your boilers, windows, LED lights, and so forth, uh, recommends upgrades. That usually uh, you know, entails a large investment up front. 
And then the theory goes that you'll recover that investment, maybe realize some savings 5, 10, 15 years down the road. This is not an energy audit. This is what we call a uniform cost recovery analysis, or in much simpler terms, a utility bill audit. Um, the state of Texas, actually, uh, I have that law here printed out, and I've got several copies for the committee when I'm done, uh, actually requires every state agency, a college, an institution of higher learning to undergo one of these utility bill audits every four years to make sure that they're not being overcharged uh, in the different areas. I'll kind of outline briefly here tonight. Um, again, I know we're in Michigan, but uh, Texas law requires that of their state agencies. So our process requires no upfront cost on the, from, the, from the city. Uh, we go through and perform our audit. It takes about 60 to 90 days. Uh, there is only a fee if we find cost recovery and savings for the city. And I'd like to say that's still pretty much free because you only pay if we find money that you didn't know you had in the first place. So I'll just briefly describe some of the areas that we go into and look at forensically. Uh, gas, electric, telecom, internet, wastewater, sewer, 401ks, um, 403b, property tax, and cost segregation. Again, I have that outlined here on some material for you to consider after. So there's 12 different areas. Uh, typical um, finance manager or facilities manager, this function blends with what they do. We have specialized auditors and software algorithms that are capable of interfacing with local utilities and going in and sifting through, if you will, their 500 page, 20 pound rate books with their different codes and tariffs and making sure that the city is not being overcharged in any one of these areas. And the great part about it is if we do find you're overcharged by state law, we can go back three to four years and get that cash refund and return it to the city. Uh, in addition to that, we make sure that the rates are correct going forward so that month after month, year after year, from that point forward when the audit's completed, you're saving money month after month, year after year. The process takes very little time. Uh, as quick as you can pull two or three audits, or bills, I should say, for each of the areas that you would choose to have audited, probably takes less than a couple hours. Uh, and again, no upfront cost on the city. So 85% of the time, we find that there are errors, again, because there's you know, 500 page rate books and utilities and different entities make mistakes 85% of the time. And I don't believe the city has ever uh, performed one of these types of audits, a utility bill audit. I could, I'd love to give you a lot of references tonight, uh, but for privacy reasons, I, I can't, I can make those available to you, you know, in, in private, but I can just say a lot of large national chains, franchises, several local, very, very large businesses in this area have undergone this process and received anywhere from three to $500,000 back. Now, I, don't, I can't promise that. We could go through the audit and find that you're being charged correctly on everything. It's still a win for the city. It's like a, a clean bill of health checkup. We'd come back to you and say you're paying exactly what you should be. And again, if we find nothing, there's absolutely no fee for our service, even though we worked on the process for 60 to 90 days, roughly. Uh, if there are findings, we return the cash, ensure that you have future savings going forward, and then the split on that is 50% for 24 months. And again, that's coming from money that you didn't even know you had before we performed the audit, so I still say it's kind of free. Madam Chair. Yeah, Madam Chair, I wanted this five-minute introduction um, for Fred and his team. I'm hoping that we can keep this on the agenda for two weeks. And if people want to hear from him more in between time, if you reach out to the council office, Fred, then maybe you can do one-on-one -on -one with some of the council persons like you did with me and they'd understand it better. But I wanted you to get this five-minute exposure. I wanted the administration to hear it. You've got Steve Branch there. You've got the finance chair for now and others, and we record. And so I wanted this to happen because you were moving around trying to enter in the dialogue. And so I thank you and I hope my colleagues take what you're proposing seriously and legal, finance, everybody can check it out. And if y'all turn out to be credible, 
with a free audit, then hey, why not? We'll see what happens. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Mays. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Sorry about that. Um, and, and just so that my colleagues know, um, we spoke with Great. our myself and Councilman Guerra, so um, we got some good information. So um, we are moving to 190, 106, uh, a special order as requested by City Administrator Steve Branch to allow a presentation by Zero, zero Mask. Uh, Ms. Madam Chair. Madam Chair. Oh, yes. Councilman Mays. Madam Chair, before they start talking, could we have Mr. Branch tell us a little bit and introduce them? That's what I would rather hear from whoever is requesting them before I just hear from them and give us a, get, introduce them. Madam Chair? Yes, sir. Uh, so uh, Zero Mass is a company that um, they have kind of a unique product that they, they it's a solar panel that uh, creates drinking water. It kind of condensates out of the humidity. Uh, they have them deployed all over the world. Uh, they've, I don't know, how'd you guys end up on our doorstep? But anyway, I want to introduce, this is Colin and Jonathan. And they're here from Zero Mass, but they, they want to do a, a project with the city of Flint. And they're really the ones that are best to talk about it. Thank you, sir. Hello, honorable body. Uh, my name is Jonathan Quarles. Uh, I am a Flint, proud Flint native, uh, born and raised here. And um, I'm also a consultant to Zero Mass Water. Uh, I am an angel investor and an international business development consultant. Um, and I was introduced to Zero Mass by Andra Rush, who's um, is a very prominent manufacturing um, uh, executive um, and owner. Um, she introduced me to Zero Mass. She sat on a U.S. Manufacturing Council with, um, um, with the founder of, of Zero Mass. And so for about a, a little over a year now, we've been uh, coming in on our own dime, um, meeting with community leaders, business leaders, philanthropic community, to really just um, it kind of start sharing information. And so we brought Colin in, um, who's with Zero Mass, who's gonna speak more specifically about the, the product, Zero Mass. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jonathan, Madam Chair, and members of the council. Thank My you. name is Colin Goddard. I'm a director at Zero Mass Water. We are a renewable energy and water technology company based in Phoenix, Arizona, that was founded in 2014 and now has over 100 uh, members of the staff around five continents around the world. We are excited to briefly share our technology vision uh, for economic development and a potential revenue stream for the city. And I'll also add on a personal level how incredibly meaningful it is for me to be here. I am actively uh, living with high blood lead levels in my body right now, not from drinking water, but from uh, bullet fragments left from surviving the 2007 Virginia Tech shooting. So I know what it's like to live with this condition. I know what it's like to raise a family around it. And I know the kind of fear and uncertainty that can bring. And so, um, you know, I, through this experience, it was a different kind of trauma, but you know, people say that we're not defined by the things that happen to us, but what we choose to do after the fact, how we choose to move from crisis to recovery to leadership. And so I have traveled now around the country on water issues, working for communities that have suffered many of the same challenges that, that you guys know all too well, and have seen Flintstones show up to, to hearings and council members meetings and, and command the room and be a leader on this issue and embrace it. And so our concept that I want to talk about is in that light and hopefully can play a role in Flint's journey to be that national leader on water in this country. And so in short, we want to launch an innovative localized premium bottled water line <coughs> right here in Flint, but with water that's made from the sun and the air. We want this business to hire local workers and employ local contractors to support economic development. We want to lease a portion of the city for this bottling line to support private sector investment. We want this business model to also share revenues with the city to use to fund community-focused and water-related projects into the long term. 
And we want to put Flint on the label of the bottle to help tell this story and help play a part in changing the narrative and Flint's path towards being that national leader on water. I'm sure there are many questions about what we do, particularly how do we make water from the air. You might have seen the two panels outside that Rob mentioned. Those are our source hydro panels, and they use the power of the sun only to extract moisture in the air, condense it into liquid water, add minerals, and dispense a high-quality drinking water. These hydro panels do not need any electrical connections or water connections to operate, and they exist entirely separate of existing infrastructure or pipes or anything like that. And at no point does any metals or chemicals come in contact with the water. They look like solar panels, as I said, but they're designed to make water, and they can make it nearly anywhere on the, on the planet, allowing anyone to tap into the largest unused source of clean water available to us, the vapor in the air all around. We see this bottling line starting distribution at local restaurants, um, hotels, businesses, others in hospitality, and people in the surrounding communities who don't just want to offer great tasting water to people, but also want to do that in a manner that's sustainably sourced, sustainably packaged, and also helps the Flint community at the same time. I mean, knowing how much people have given time and given resources to this community, we think that we have the right partnerships. With the right partnerships, there's tremendous opportunities for expansion. And that with that expansion comes the opportunity to help continue the, the, the narrative change here. So this will be the first project like this in the US, but we are actively developing similar projects in Cape Town, South Africa, which is the, the major, one of the major cities in the world that almost ran out of water, as well as Australia through a partnership with a local uh, Aboriginal run business in an underserved community. So we're actively working to put together a lot of the details around this concept, getting it up and running and making water. We hope to return to the council in short order to ask for a, a, a lease payment, a lease agreement um, for part of unused land in the city. Um, and I'll note that we're not asking the city to uh, provide any sort of financial assistance or support um, in this effort. We are confident that our investment in, into, city, into, the Flint, into the city of Flint can, can uh, help this issue and help this investment stand on itself. So um, I hope you've been able to convey in a, on a high level the concept that we wanted to talk about and, and happy to answer any questions. And sorry, I didn't realize that the uh, presentation was up here. That is the hydro panel that you can see. Um, and if you could, those are some of the projects that we've done around the world in 20 countries to date at schools, hospitals, disaster relief, um, farms, different entities. If you keep clicking through, those are roughly all the countries that we've been in projects with so far. One more time, please. And that is an image, a conceptual image of the type of bottled water product that we think we can make here. Um, you can see it's a very nice glass bottle, very sleek packaging, and that's not the final image, but that's kind of the general idea to give you guys a picture. And because those list all the, the benefits that I kind of verbally mentioned. So I want to be brief on time. Thank you, sir. Did you have yeah, something you would say? Um, okay. One of the things that, in talking with Joe Mass in the very beginning, one of the things one of the things that I wanted to be very clear with Zero Mass um, before coming in, like I said, this, I'm, this is my community. Uh, my family members, my friends have been affected by the, the water crisis, is to make sure that, and when he mentioned this is the first of the U.S., we're doing work all throughout the U.S., but this is actually one where we're actually doing real community engagement. And that was, the, uh, that was one of the things that I said that's a, that's a, a, um, a deal breaker. If we're, if we're not engaged, we're not educating, we're not... Um, one, getting the permission from the, from the community and, and getting their clearance before we do anything, um, that this won't work. And so they agreed to it. And then, like I said, over a year, they've been coming in on their own dime, meeting with leaders throughout the community. Um, and that's one of the things that I think would make this very beneficial, at least for me, being involved with it. So we would love to hear. Um, and if there's any questions you all may have, we would love to entertain that. Thank so. you. Councilman Mays. Yeah, Madam Chair. Madam Chair. Um, you say this is your community. You were born and raised here. Yes, sir. And you went to what school? I went to uh, uh, Sobe Elementary, Whittier Middle School, and graduated from Flint Northern. Flint Northern, I did too. Yeah. Um, let me, hey, 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 all you Southwestern Central, you are messing, hey, I ain't. Good school. My, my position is this, huh? 
What college did you go I to? I went to the best university, Florida Agriculture and Mechanical University. I thought you were finna say Michigan State, but that's a whole different thing. We won today. My position is this. If you hang around Flint for any length of time, or if you in the know, and you don't, you could be in the know and not know this. I've articulated a Flint brand of bottled water. Did you know that? You did, is that a yes? Yes, sir. You've heard me say that. Yes. And now you trying to live that. Now, you said you was an owner? Did you say you was an owner? Yes, sir. An owner of what? What they're doing or a no. distributor? I have several different businesses that I own, but I am a consultant to Zero Mass. You are a consultant to Zero Mass. You're not an owner of Zero Mass. Correct. That's what I'm getting at. It's some folks somewhere on zero mass. Now, when these panels is set up, you say the water ain't getting in, ain't in contact with no nothing. When it make, what is it in contact with, a plastic tube? Because it's got to be made and drawn out the air and then tubed into something, a large container. How much, answer this, what is it in contact with? And then how much is it making per hour a day? Give me them two things. Two good questions. Uh, it comes in contact with food grade, food grade plastic tubes. Plastic to, tubes, to that's okay, that's yep. that answer. Um, and then each, each panel can make roughly uh, 150 liters a month. Uh-uh, that's Canada. Hour. Tell me in gallons or pints in or gallons. some okay. U.S. old uh, school measurement, I'm old. Yep, a single panel roughly makes just over a gallon of water per day. A we're gallon talking, a day. Yeah, we're talking about, you know, several hundred panels that makes gallons, hundreds of gallons every day that can feed it. That picture line. that you showed is one panel. Correct. That's a gallon a day. Correct. And you want land to put, let's say we deal with 14 million gallons a day in the city of Flint. We're not going to set 14 million panels no, no, around. Sir. No, sir. It's but let's say we distributed 4 million, and that included labor costs. But let's just say we did, I wonder, Chloe, I wonder how many bottles did we distribute on the bottle giveaway? From what I'm hearing you say, sir, in order to get a hundred gallons a day, we need a hundred panels. In order to get a thousand gallons a day, we need a thousand panels sitting around on either city-owned, land bank-owned, or private-owned. If I bought a panel, how much is a panel? Do you sell private people panels? Yes, sir. How much is a panel? Roughly $2,000 full MSRP. So if I paid $2,000, and put a panel at 125 Russell Street, my home, mm -hmm. I'm gonna get a gallon a day. We do two panels for a basic residential operation, which covers all the drinking water needs. $4,000 for, for, I get for, for two a gallons a day. For 15 years, every for day. For 15 years. Yeah. You know I'm old, I might not have a 10, but that my son could use the panels. That's not to slight you, but my position is this. I don't know if that's enough production. I don't know if that's enough production, because right now Flint is hot, and we go through a gallon maybe to cook with. Mm -hmm. And so it's a, it's a supply, it's a demand, but now have you got gallons of this water already stacked up in warehouses? Uh, we don't have any panels deployed here besides... No, I ain't talking about panels. panels. I'm talking about water. Yeah, we have storage tanks. We would build an external storage tank. Each one of those holds eight gallons of water when it's okay. full. And then hundreds of those would be going to larger, you know, thousand-gallon storage tanks. And the reason and I then, ask, yep. because water don't set still here in bottled water. It's consumed as it's made. And I'm concerned about the production. Now, don't get me wrong. If my fellow Northern Viking want to do it, I might support him. But he ain't making enough capacity to keep up. But he can make money. 
And we can maybe provide some land for him. All of that we can cooperate with, but you're going to get beat out by somebody else producing a bunch of bottles real fast. And they, the demand is there. So I had been waiting to hear from y'all. From what I heard, I can support you, maybe, probably more so because of him, but also because of you, you got a unique thing. And I'm a good thinker, and I'm smart enough to know, ain't nothing I can say negative but slow production. You knew that, and you concerned about that. This guy wanting to say something, so I'm gonna be quiet for a second, if I may. No, thank you, and, and you know, that's, those are all valid points, and, and I think one of the things that we, we constantly say is that this is one solution, right? So there's multiple solutions. Um, what's really significant about this is all of the other components outside of, like I said, you're drinking clean, fresh water that's not, um, that's not compromised by any kind of lead or any kind of existing water. So that's the differentiator out of every other water that you have. The, the other part is we're looking to create jobs, um, real jobs. We're currently, right now, I've been talking to um, you know, comp local companies here for branding agencies, those that will be doing distribution. Um, all of this will be Flint, not outside of Flint. So that's, that's another aspect. Can I interrupt you one time before I yield the floor? What you say your name was? Colin Goddard. Colin? Yes, sir. And what you say your name was? Uh, Jonathan Quarles. Jonathan and Colin. Y'all heard me say something. You heard the S word. I said from this seat publicly, I can support you, but I'm concerned about your value. One of the last tidbits I want to talk about before I yield the floor, because I talk long, I never stop. And I change my mind back and forth as I get to know folks. My concern before I yield the floor is distribution. That's my way of thinking. You know, I'm, a, I'm, I'm one of them old network marketing, profit sharing, bonus residual check guys. Have y'all looked at that form of distribution? And if you have, you know, as a council person, I can work another job. I can own another business. I'm a brand. I don't know if I'm a good brand, but I'm a brand. And this is the area that I'm concerned about. And I'm also concerned about a bottled water, a traditional bottled water factory as well. So y'all the closest destin came before us. I will help people, Flint people make money, but I'll help more than less. Distribution, I heard you say local restaurants, but I'd like to see that done through a sales and marketing plan that allows the individual to sell and market to those restaurants as well as to individuals and to sponsor other people and branch out. 10 times 10 is 100 distributors. The next level, 1,000, and so forth and so on. What is your thoughts on that, Jonathan? Yeah. Uh, that's, that's actually good. We, we've started having that conversation now about well, several different things, right? So um, one is having the community, as I, as I mentioned, I'm an angel investor, so having a community share venture. So for this bottled uh, water production, you know, having a way, this is just ideas we've started talking about with community leaders, engaging a typical resident that say, hey, I have $1,000 that I wanna contribute to this bottling company. So then they become equity partners of this bottling company um, where they actually will receive equity from the profits that's received from it. Um, and then also having them involved in the whole marketing and sales standpoint of. And I'm interested in that too, but I'm also interested in some 20 and 30 and $50 equity partners who are some communicators and distributors as well. And so I don't know what you do with these guys as a consultant, but I worked for General Motors for 30 years. The manufacturer can make money and the distributor, they call them car dealerships. Car dealership owners, I know some, they rich, they have maids and big houses, that's a business. So that's what I'm gonna leave y'all with. I'm willing to maybe help you, but I don't think y'all got the capacity to keep up with what I'm looking at in the city of Flint in the, what y'all described. 
I'm interested in what you're saying, but I'm also interested in traditional brands of water too. Y'all brand, I don't even know the price breakdown in the structure yet. I'm looking at bottle samples or whatever. Can we agree that we can have some private conversation, you and I? Yes, absolutely. And then we'll take it from there. I'm interested in bottled water distribution. I'm interested in entrepreneurship, but I'm interested in particularly black folks. I get in trouble when I say that, but my ward is 97% black. I'm interested in black folks, not just being consultants, but owners mm -hmm. and so forth and so on. I just wanna make sure that I'm looking at what I'm looking at, hearing what I'm hearing, and I look forward to conversation because we've been in some conversation too. We are almost ready to call meetings well, when I call the first meeting of the distributors, it's gonna be 50 to 100 show up, I bet you. And then we gonna sponsor and do, we done check with the IRS, we understand the bonus and price structure, we understand the slide and scale of bonus and profit and residual income. And so, <laughs> if the Lord move in a certain way, let's see if there's something we can do with this brand. I look forward to talking to you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Gear. So how big is that? I don't see any about. Madam Chair. Yeah. You'll see them outside the front building. It's roughly four by eight. Okay, four. Yeah. Okay, all right, I've always wondered what those were. So uh, my question is kind of, it's kind of doing some research. So is, is it about a gallon of bottled water, about like $1.22 a piece? Is that an average compared to? Depends on the type of bottled water. This is a very high quality, Solid pH, good TDS, alkalinity, very nice soft water. This is not something that's easily accessible in the market at a, at a Kroger, for example. This uh, would be so after it makes that gallon, how much do you think it would be worth, that actual gallon itself? We think, we, we, we've been now looking at uh, for each 500 milliliter bottles of water or liter bottles of water. I mean, this will be a, a higher price point than what you buy at a grocery store, right? This is, this is for the kind of nice experience at a restaurant or at a, at a, at a hotel or at boardrooms initially. So we, you know, we want to walk before we can run. And so this will be at that, at that higher price point. We're still looking at the details of what that's actually going to fall. Um, uh, but th this, is, this is what's coming together in the next few weeks. Okay, yeah, it's because it's super impressive how you were able to get water from the air and stuff like that, definitely. Um, and do you have a certain area that you're looking at in the city of Flint that you would want to lease? There's a number of locations we found. It just needs to be flat and clear access to the sun. I mean, there's, there's parts of the old water plant that's unused that is compelling in, in terms of its uh, symbolism, even though that anything there would be entirely separate from the water supply. It would be not connected to in any way. Um, that's an option on the, uh, that we're looking at. So have you looked at Buick City? Um, I will have to double check. So, well, so, uh, Councilman, um, I, I think the hope for Buick City is that we can put a heavy industrial customer on there and utilize the existing infrastructure, uh, but certainly uh, their, their product is, or, or their panel is kind of temporary, if you will. I mean, you can set it up and move it. I mean, it's not like it's completely mobile. There is a setup, so it doesn't have to live there forever. So, you know, it, it can be very dynamic. Um, right now we're looking at, you know, potentially a couple hundred panels and, and we can scale way up so you could go into the thousands. Really the only limit is the space you have to put them in. And, and obviously if there's the demand for it, we can continue to scale as big as we need to scale. But the idea is to, you know, we're going we're gonna to build it somewhat small, see how it goes. We want to put local residents to work. We're looking at something that we believe is sustainable for many years. Um, rooftops are accessible. I mean, anything that, that you know, is there, we, we're going to potentially utilize if the demand is there. There's other things that they do with uh, growing vegetables and things of that nature um, in hoop houses, if you will. And so there's, there's a huge potential here if it, if it goes over well and we're able to uh, accomplish what we want to. The, I think that you guys will be happy with kind of the joint venture we're looking at here with Zero Mass. Thank you. Mr. Davis. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, 
Mr. Jonathan and Colin, I love the idea. To me, it's, it's, it's actually what this community needs. But I was spending a little different. What do I mean? A lot of people in this city is elderly and got compromised health conditions, dialysis and everything else, and they need the purest water they could get. And I really see, and that'd be a big success if y'all stick with it, because it's a big community concerned with the best they could get to help them. We don't, the community don't trust the water. And it's hard to find a pure system that they could actually, right out the gate, trust it. That look trustable. I, I really see that being a good investment, but I would pitch it toward the, the health community more than I would the general population and let it spur from there. But you got an excellent idea. That's an excellent idea. Councilman, I also and, want to add that uh, we're going to install um, an array of panels here at City Hall, mm -hmm. and there will be a, potentially a couple dispensers that people can, you know, use like a, a drinking fountain or fill a glass or yes. something to, you know, a bottle. Um, there's also going to be an array at Burston, um, and that's kind of our pilot, if you will, to to say, hey, you know, come and try this water. We want you to get an idea of what it is, understand what it's like, understand what it tastes like, and so that people can get the, you know, can get an idea of what it is and, and hopefully help uh, help it to grow and help it to market it. Well, I wish you would market through GHS or some of them health type places so the, the elderly community would know that exists or is available. I think that's an excellent product. Thank you. Mr. Griggs. Mr. Benzik, while you're up. Should Clint have uh, safe, clean drinking water within about two years from now? Yes or no? My opinion is, is it's safe and clean now. I agree. Well, then that means it's bottle quality. quality. Why don't we just start selling our tap water? We could potentially sell tap water if people would buy it. If there's a market for it. Yeah, that's, I think that's I'm not the, sure anybody in Flint would want to buy a bottle of Flint tap water. But, I mean, why bother with having a bottling plant when we're here in two years we should have, you know, perfectly good water? I got you. What happens to this bottling plant? I don't, I don't think anything, I don't think anything happens to Try to get some to other the, city to take it? No, I don't think anything happens to the bottling plant because I think we're talking about two different markets. So, so we're looking at the public water supply. I think you're, you're talking directly about the public who's, water who's supply. Who's the market? Is it the people in Flint? It could be the people in Flint. And they got to pay for this bottle. The if water. they choose to. Well, why wouldn't they just bottle their own water out of their tap? This doesn't make sense to me. I'm sorry. No, uh, good, good point, uh, Councilman Griggs. This is, um, you know, if you if you were to go to a restaurant and buy a bottle of Perrier or Evian bottle like that, this is that in in that kind of space that not is not so much for the in, in your home residence, but in that um, premium, nice experience of a of a executive suite or ho a nice hotel or, or restaurant is where we start, and then as the community understands it. As, as the world understands the water and, and its place in the story here, then there are options for uh, a well, number of different I recommend you check the hospitality industry <coughs> and see if they would buy the water from you. That's because I'm sure Albion and, and people like that may be giving them good deals. But uh, I know with the uh, bed and breakfast that I own, we only serve bottled water. We always have, even before we even heard of bad plant water. But potentially we could supply your bed and breakfast with bottled water. Yeah, if, it'll com if it will compete with Sam's. Well, I don't, I, I think so. That's where we get it now. So, so I, think the pr I think the product that we're talking about is similar to like a Fiji water, stuff like that, the high-end bottled water that uh, some people choose to drink. Sam's. They treat it more like a beverage than they do, you know, just, just a, a bottle of water. I can even get busy water from Italy at Sam's. Absolutely. Maybe we'll be selling this at Sam's. Uh, okay. And, and let me just, it, if I, oh, go ahead. Can I just add one more thing too? Um, one of the things, like I said, the differentiator from this and any other bottled water, one is sustainable clean water that's totally different and cleaner and fresher than purified water. 
but then there's also potential revenue share for the city where the city will actually be getting funds where you won't get that same thing from Sam's or Nest, Nestle or wherever else. So. There, there's there's really no opportunity for any I mean they're they want to partner with the city so the city doesn't have any capital outlay in this it can it can only result in benefit for the city it, it it's not we, we're, we don't stand to lose anything so we're trying to create some local jobs I, I don't know how many that's going to be but it depends on how big we have to scale it if it really takes off it it, it could be a lot of jobs uh, I mean that's just what we're looking at at the end of the day, if, if it doesn't work out, they take their panels and go home. I mean, they, that's, that's what happens with it. Well, as long as there's no cost to the city, I, no, why it's, it's not? All, it's, it can only be a benefit for us. Yeah, okay. All right, I understand. Miss um, uh, um, Winfrey Carter. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I just want to say thank you for your presentation. I, I'm, 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 I'm into this. I'm listening. I, I want to um, sit down with you guys and find out more information. I mean, revenue sharing, jobs, natural water. Um, this could be really good for the city. So I'm interested in um, talking to you guys more. And thank you for um, your presentation. Thank you. And there's one other thing I want to add that I, I don't think we touched is there's also a STEM component that we've done in the past with other public schools where we are teaching and educating young people yeah. about the technology, yeah. which the whole career path of water technology. Yes. That's one, we want to make sure and we, you know, it, you know, we've, we hear a lot of this about Flint being the, the, the water capital of the world. Um, mm -hmm. We believe that we can we can be a part of that partnership. And like I said, we, we can't do this without you all and all the citizens. So. And, and, and thank you, that's a good idea to, you know, talk to the students. This is a part of science, chemistry, you know, it, and I like this. So um, I would like to um, sit down and talk to you guys more and see where, um, where you guys are headed. Thanks. Attorney Wheeler wanted to make a statement. Yeah, I just wanted to also, I, you probably do remember this, but I think it was back, in, and I think Colin mentioned it, um, back in November or December of last year, there were two um, hydro panels that the city did accept uh, through a resolution, and those are the ones that were, are out front. So that, like I said, that's just another opportunity to take a look at them, and like I said, so they had already, which we appreciate, they'd already made an initial investment, so to speak, to allow the city to have those. So, like I said, we did that resolution. Um, also, um, I will uh, make sure to make sure that um, the presentation is submitted to you all in paper form, so you just have a, a copy of what they've already presented tonight as well. But, you know, like I said, it's, it will be a, a very good um, partnership, you know, for, for the city as, as well. Excuse me, but wouldn't that cost um, the city? Did you want to be recognized, no, Mr. Griggs? Recognized. Mr. Griggs, you have the floor. Okay. Does that mean no administrative cost? None of our lawyer cost? You know, they don't think, I don't think our lawyers do stuff free. Mr. Mays, well, I, oh, oh, I mean, not for Mr. Griggs. Um, did you want, is your question to Ms. Well, my question would be, yeah, well, she's talking cost right now, legal cost. No, no, I, I'm not. I'm, I'm talking about the panels that, that were given to us at no cost that the council approved back in, it was either late November or early December. I don't want to give you the exact date, but that's, that's when we did accept those. So anytime you would like to initially take, you know, take a look outside the front doors of City Hall, there are two that are right outside there that you can look at immediately. And um, the only thing else I was saying was that I would also provide you a copy of their presentation, but, but we do not incur any legal fees for zero mass and they don't incur any legal fees for the city. Okay. Mr. Guerra. Out of curiosity, where's the water going that's being collected from up front? So those have not been plumbed into anywhere. So those are being stored in that reservoir. So they're just sitting there, they're not being used yet? No, we're, okay. we're, our, our intention is to add 15 more to those two, put them up on the roof, and have it dispense to a water dispenser in the lobby. Okay. 
Thank you, gentlemen. We appreciate your time. Miss, one last question. What's your question, Mr. Mayor? Have you got any of that water that's been produced from outside? Because I didn't quite hear your answer of what was happening with it. You say it's where? It's stored internally within the panel. We have not commissioned those and plumbed those, so you can't dispense from those two right now. How many gallons would be in there? That's been sitting there a while. Six, 16. 16. Gallons. Yeah, those are full. I'd like to taste some of it. Is that a dangerous proposition? No, we have, we have some that's bottled separately, which we can supply you and other that's members here. of the council. I'll, well, you got my car. Yep. We'll see when I hear from you. Yep. Yeah, we'll, we can get everyone sample if you like. And then I'm going to watch them and see how they react after they drink it. Happy to give you a tour. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I'll wait for the call. Thank you, sir. So um, next on the list is a special order discussion about the letter 190084. Yeah, Madam Chair. Councilman Mays. Yeah, this is the discussion of the letter. Yes. Um, I had received a copy of that letter from Mr. Jarrett. That's how it came to me through you, Madam Chair, to Mr. Jarrett. That's sit, who's sitting right there. I want to ask him something. No, Councilman Mays. Mr. Jerry. Councilman Mays, um, I'm, I'm not going to. Um, how long is the dialogue that you plan to have with Mr. Jerry? We received a copy. What the difference council office. would it make? It makes a, a big difference. Why is he treated differently from any other special order? Because I've he's not Mr. on the Jerry. special order, and I'm he's a, not an administration. I requested this. The, my special order. You had yours, and you did what you wanted to do and talk and say what you wanted to say. And well, we I'll tell you see. what. I'll give Mr. Jarrett five minutes, and we'll then take, you can we'll go. We'll work from now, Ms. Galloway. Well, but I, no, I, that is how much time he's going to get, and I'll read the rule that says that I have a right to do that. And I'll read the rule that says I can appeal your That's ruling. That's fine. You, you ain't going to treat Just, Mr. Jarrett I'm no not, different Councilman than them Mays. other special orders. You Councilman don't even know Mays, what I'm finessing. You, you treat I, me differently. So this ain't about Mr. But Jarrett. This Mays, about my special what order. What I'm going to tell you is you spent, took, you stole from me three hours on this letter on last week. It point won't happen of order. again this night. What's your point of order? This is a, my special order I requested. I'm, I said through the chair to Mr. Jared, and here you trying to embarrass and, and I, scold I'm me in a not. public meeting. You out of order. Councilman and if you Mays, continue to talk one more word when you didn't give me the flow, I'm going to appeal your your, your, your That your is action. fine. Councilman Mays, I am point again of order. saying, what is your point of order? You out of order. I I'm have not. Flow. I am I letting you know. I appeal the ruling of the chair. There is an appeal of the point ruling of the chair on the floor. Is Point there a order. second? Point of order. Oh, no, well, there's an appeal on the floor. Is there a second? I second. It's been moved and seconded. According to council rules, council members may request to ask questions of administrative staff, et cetera, during debate on any agenda item. Guest speaker time allowed shall be determined by the presiding chair and is not considered to be part of the limited debate time allocated to council members. We spent three hours on this very letter on last week, and that is why I am ruling the way that I am. It's within my purview, and that's my decision. Mr. Davis. Thank you, Madam Thank Chair. You. It's clear that it was a prejudice uh, toward Mr. Jared because he hadn't even came up to the podium, and everybody else was speaking without a prejudice. This body should not favor a prejudice, so it's unfair to even put a prejudice before you even begin. And that would be my point. I yield the floor. Thank you, sir. Uh, Madam Chair. Mr. Mays. Yeah, Madam Chair, Easton went beyond Mr. Jarrett. This is a special order that's on the agenda. It's a special order as requested by Councilman Mays. Now Councilman Mays is trying to deal with his special order, so it's not just a prejudice toward Mr. Jarrett, it's a prejudice toward this elected councilman's special order. We didn't interfere with yours. Your special order was up here um, requested by Ms. Galloway to deal with General Motors. We let you do that. We didn't interrupt you. We didn't say this, that, and the other, but when it come to ours, you abusing the chair. 
and I can't stand for it. You dead wrong. All you had to do was, I said, Madam Chair, through you to Mr. Jarrett, that's who I got the letter from. You don't know what I was going to ask him, how long it was going to take. You didn't preliminarily do that with these other folks. You're just getting a little ridiculous. And these arguments that you create when we start talking within a minute, you did it to Mr. Griggs, you did it to Ms. Um, Winfrey Carter, you do it to me constantly, you out of order. You way out of order, and it's getting ridiculous, and it's causing these meetings to go long. And so your chairmanship has caused problems on stuff that could be over with and done with. And it's happening repeatedly. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, I am going to say to my colleagues, again, Guest speaker time allowed shall be determined by the presiding chair. I am disappointed that my colleagues believe that I am being unfair to anyone. Point the of order. people that, no, what is your point of order? The point of order, Madam Chair, I'm not being disrespectful, but what I'm hearing wasn't read to no other person that was at that podium speaking today other than Councilman. Uh, it, that's not a point of order, but I, 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 I gave you the time. I and Mr. Phone. Davis, if you will let me finish, the ones that came to the podium were actually voted on by this council in the additions and changes to the agenda. And so the, the speaker, Point of information. What is your point was of information? Was this also yes. voted on yes, as a was. change in an addition? Yes, yes Council, count, you guys look. You, you are abusing the point of information now. At, we are in a, a appeal of the chair, and you guys know. Leave us ass sitting here. That's what I'm about ready to do, and it won't be a form. This is getting ridiculous, man. Councilman Major, man. out of order. You out of order. Councilman Point Mayor. of order. You out of order. What is your point of order? That's what this appeal is on. Councilman, and if you well then vote, let's call for the question. It ain't nobody here. Oh. You vote no and it, and, and, and it fails. But that don't mean you're right. Councilman I'm Mays. telling you, Councilman I will Mays. leave this council business where it's at Thank in you. your finance committee Thank meeting you. and, and you're going to look like a fool because every you, week, you are out God of bless order, you. Councilman let's Mays. see what you do. You are out of order, out. Councilman Mays. You out of order. Thank you. You think we some fools. You making a mockery and Thank a you. mess out of this city business, Miss Galloway. We, we, we grown. Point. We elect.